Some serious gourmet shit. What flavor is this? That's right, it's the all hell medium roast private blend. Check out the Geek Grind Coffee Nerdrotic page for our other options like the Decadent, Feathers of Liberty, Vanilla Infused Flavored Coffee. Or if you're looking for something darker, try the Dark Roast FNT Blend of the Fellowship. You know what? Just buy all three. GeekGrindCoffee.com. Use discount code Nerdrotic. Huzzah! So long, gay boys! Now, what it got here is a scrotum and nothing else. You're a cunt. The American Society of Magical Negroes. Nerdorotic.com. Did you not hear anything? Is that better? I didn't hear it. Nobody else heard it. Because that was on mute. Oh. No, no. <laughs> Whoopsies. Nobody heard boomer's it. Boomer's got a boom. Boomer's got a boom. Let's go. It's hump day. It is time for the Nerd Rotic Nooner. And uh, wow, a lot of craziness. Uh, who had Gamergate 2 on their bingo card this year? I did not. Nope. I nope, did not. not. I did not, but um, 2024 is going to be crazy, but I don't think it's going to be 2020 crazy. I think it'll be 2016 crazy. Does that make any sense? I think it'll be a little more fun. There'll be a little more memes flying around, a little less burning cities. I could be wrong, and I would believe me. I'll be the first one to admit it if I am. But uh, yeah, I said not as many, by the way. I didn't say there wouldn't be any burning cities. Just not as many. Uh, there might be something else. I don't know. Uh, but it, it's it's so far, it's been kind of funny. I think the year's been, like, not this total freaking disaster uh, in a horrible, like, I want to give up in black pill way. It's it's right. it's a, oh, the tide is turning, and I'm getting uh, a few laughs out of this as we go along, which I like. I think what the tide has turned in the sense that people are fighting back and pointing out hypocrisy and pointing out and also um things have revealed themselves and and i think that people are just sick of it i get oh my god i was at i was at a screening of a movie um a couple days ago and a guy come up to me this is happening more and more often for me in los angeles which is weird people coming up to me and just quietly saying i really like what you're doing and then a guy told me he is a below the line guy. And just to be yeah. clear, below the line are people that are not on camera. Gaffers, lighting guys, grips. They deal with electrical stuff. The people who do real work. People do the actual real work on a film yeah. set and, get, and make the trains run on time. And he showed me a conversation he had with his agent via text. Basically, it's like, hey, I, I'm not supposed to ask you this, but I need to ask you this. Do you check any boxes? This is the exact quote. Do you check any boxes? No. And it was like, oh, and he just replied like, oh, yeah, I'm queer slash and then put some other sort of nebulous thing. And he's like, perfect. Great. Thank you. And just so he could get hired below the line, not like a actor, not a writer, not a director. Oh, I, I so I'm yeah. below the line. I, no. I'm positive this is happening in like QC. If like. It, unless they're outsourcing all of it. I don't even know like how much right. uh, QC is being done in Hollywood at all. There will be more than when I was doing it. 
because right, uh, right. QC was mostly for like Blu-ray and DVD. Now it's all for streaming, so there would be more. But uh, they were trying to outsource it to India, so I don't know if that like actually happened. They the first time they tried it, it failed miserably because there was just too much of a cultural divide between India and America it, as far as um, just talking to each other. And I've told this story before. I'll tell it again because it's funny. We we took a cultural class at Technicolor. What? We took a, a cultural class at Technicolor so we could speak to our our uh, our co our our comrades over there in uh in India uh who worked in Bangalore, right? So um the uh, I was working for Technicolor who was contracted out to Paramount and Disney and Warner Brothers specifically HBO. And Technicolor was outsourcing their work to Bangalore, their QC work on DVDs and Blu-rays. Paramount specifically told them, do not do it. You cannot do it. It is a breach of contract if you if you outsource. I don't know about the other two companies, but I know Paramount was like, mm, no. So we took this cultural class because it was just starting. And I was there as somebody who, it's a job, it's called a, it was a job that was made up for, for Paramount, by the way. It was just completely made up. They, they made up the job. A, a, and uh, uh, and I was training my replacement when I just learned it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm training my replacement when I just learned a job, and I have to uh, I have to take this cultural class. The cultural class consisted basically of one thing: people in India. And forgive me, anybody who's living in India right now. This is what Technicolor told me, the French company. Uh, people in India do not admit when they make a mistake. They do not admit when they're wrong um, ever, like ever. So you got to work your way around that. And I'm all, well, that's a little difficult because we're quality checking. <laughs> we are, and that's part of the thing we are checking the quality and we need feedback and we need to exchange yeah. ideas and that's a mess up. And if they said they're, they're just not going to take it. And I'm like, really? And I have no idea. Like, I've never heard this before in my life. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that was uh, really culturally sensitive of them to just say, you're going to have to deal with the fact that they won't admit that they made a mistake. I'm like, well, I, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> that's going to be a big <sighs> problem. When I was in the games industry in the 90s, I went to Japan on a trip to Shoshinkai, which is the Nintendo show. And I had a friend of mine that used to work there give me this whole like, I mean, he had just printed it out. And it was like the culture things you need to know about Japan. And it, the, the couple things that were interesting that stood out is there's no tipping. They will not accept a tip because they perceive it as a bribe. So you don't tip anybody. Okay. The, uh, the, yeah, I know it was weird. The other thing was he said that like stealing is considered like if you like petty theft is considered a shame. There's no people will leave bicycles on the streets of Japan unlocked because to steal would be the only crime is like the Yakuza. And that's like the mafia there. Right. Um, and he, they, he said also avoid hanging around anyone with tattoos. And the weird thing is the one word I remember from going over there was like, if you're on a crowded subway or you're trying to get past somebody, they will not move. They will like actually just stay in place unless you say the word sumimasen which is excuse me so i said that word so often because i'm just you're trying to get around people and they will get out of your way if you just say that word it was weird it was like a magic word but um i, I had a blast going to japan i really admired the culture but yeah the, it's nice to know like what those differences are but that's weird in india they like won't admit a mistake that's according funny. to technicolor and like that was kind of my experience but it wasn't as bad as they made it out to be like there was a way to work around it but there was just a but the, um the, the the hardest thing was the nuance like they just didn't you know under, I didn't understand their nuance. They didn't understand ours as far as language and stuff. And that made it like damn near impossible. So, this, by the way, the job title, I was brain farting on it, was a pre-mastering technician. That's, that's, that the, sounds... that's the made up title they made for like a jack of all trades who works right next to the vault and is the last light of like the, I'm the final QC. And I did some menu work and I did some editing stuff and I did all kinds of shit. But the, I was pre-mastering technician. Right. And at Technicolor, you had to like 
You had to check in and get frisked when you went to the bathroom. Really? Because I was working next to the vault. You know, these oh. are all the masters of every, every, like Thor, the Thor movie master was in our vault. Like I, I wow. brought it to the vault, right? So like when I went to go pee, I had to show my card and get a little pat down and stuff, but they never noticed um, my thumb drive that was shaped like a key on my keychain the whole time. Just walked oh. in and out, had a thumb drive <laughs> that they never noticed. Um, That's like some Mission Impossible shit. That's it's weird. It was really weird. That's uh, cool. It was cool to, to work there. It was fun. It was fun. I was kind of working by myself. But um, funny, funny thing is somebody, uh, uh, to, to finish that story, somebody was talking about Bangalore, India in an email and hit reply all and it went to Paramount and they found out. Oh. Oh no! Lost the contract. They fucking. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude. That is bad. It was crazy. It's back in 2011. No NDA applies that long, right? Okay, no. so um, yeah, Here we go. Yeah, so we got GamerGate. Um, also another thing we need Lady Grimmaster to find extra girlfriend to tell her is that uh, basically political ad against Nelson Peltz. I think it's on the Disney site. It's fucking cringe. We got to go over that. Did and then, I see that they were buying votes oh, I, for the board? I, if you can, why wouldn't you? I mean, like yeah. that shouldn't be legal, but like that that should. If you can buy votes for the board, then I am not a financial analyst. I wouldn't want anything to do with that company because it's all a fucking sham. Because guess what? Most stocks are fucking sham. Yeah. Okay. I just I I just think they are. Uh, I'm sure that's horrible financial advice, but I've been kicked out of three high schools and I'm not a financial analyst. So don't listen to me. I collect key comic books as investments. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's worked out for me so far. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm property, actual Art property. Uh, but um, also, Bo DeMeo unceremoniously yeah. canned yesterday while we were live on Real BBC. From X Men ninety seven, one week they say weeks, one week before it was due to release, he will not be on the red carpet. His uh, his his social medias have been scrubbed. There's lots of speculation out there about an OnlyFans. I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. What what is okay? Did you not hear it this yesterday? Up, yeah, no, I I saw I only saw about half the real BBC. Yeah, I was yeah, it's all good. doing a bunch of stuff, but um, shame on you. I know, I know. I'm just Dude, kidding. I love the real BBC. I'm just like I'm hanging out with you guys, and I'll DM you during the show. You, you will. You actually do. Uh, if there's, I try to. You're like a producer. Do... You're like a hidden producer of the show. You're always I like. I just like, I like to help. I like to Thanks. help. Thanks, By the Chris. way, they they released a 13 second crow teaser. Okay, we'll watch that tomorrow. It's 13 seconds. I'll, you know, I'll find it. And then they'll play the 13 seconds before the trailer. Like, right, here right, comes you know, the trailer. Here's a trailer for the trailer. Here comes the trailer. And boom, the boom. And trailer the, time. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff is so dumb. Mm -hmm. it's the, they, they just realize people have TikTok attention spans now, which sucks. Yeah, so so they're going to go watch a two-hour movie. <laughs> right. What? Uh, but, uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to discuss... All of that, uh, according to Clownfish, the toys are already in clears. What, for uh, the X-Men 97? You know what? Guys, gals, go on eBay. Go on your favorite auction site and go get the old ones. They're not that expensive. You can go. You want to get a Wolverine on card? That might be the most expensive. But if you want to get an X-Men from the animated series, it's going to cost about as much as the new one and be better. By Toy Biz, it won't fall apart. And it's vintage, so it'll just look cooler. It'll look OG. That's what you do. That's what I got. I got X-Men shit all over the place. Unfortunately, all my comics are in storage. But uh, I'm going to have to dig them out now. Because now I want to read uh, the Dark Phoenix Saga. Oh, the whole Phoenix Saga. Phoenix Saga, Dark Phoenix Saga. That's right. Gary, do you ever read comics, digital no. comics, ever? Uh only when I absolutely have to, like on a plane or um, right. like uh, no re no restraints play, which I did buy a physical copy of. Uh, I had it. Uh, uh, the Sasuke Sisters Black Widow is probably the mm -hmm. last digital one I bought to read in prep for a show. But that's all of five that I've read in my entire life. 
Yeah, I don't. I'm not They're a big terrible. fan. I I don't mind the video teasers. It's like that's cool. Gives you a taste of the comic, like a little like a trailer for the comic. Those are like that's kind of neat, you know. Like, but digital comics, my brain just doesn't work that way. And this is gonna sound weird. I like the smell of comics. There's nothing weird about that. I like the smell of books and comics. I think books, yeah. digital books make sense. That's I like. I uh, I would rather do audiobook. I wouldn't read a book digitally, but it makes more sense than a comic book. It, it's a, it's a tactile experience. You have to touch it. You have to touch right. it. So uh, and it yeah. didn't work. Digital comics just didn't work. It's it's yeah, a just... minuscule percentage of of all of the publishing revenue. It never yeah. took over and never took off. Um, oh, I, you know, I don't. How does uh, tell me, manga fans who buy, d do you buy digital manga? It seems like printing manga doing pretty well on the yeah. paper. You know, the old school. Just anecdotally, from what I see when I walk into a Barnes and Noble or a comic shop now, and the comic shop's now a manga shop. So I'm yeah, guessing I'm get yeah. People just want to read it and hold it. Uh, I was yeah, told about it. And the other thing about like actual physical comics, not to like, you can give it to someone else to read and they can take it and give it back to you. Or you can even sell it if you want to sell a used comic or like a digital. It's just there's something about it that like it devalues the thing. That's why I think that vinyl has come back in a big way. People like physical media and the, I, the fact that like certain like, We've all heard about like, you know, if you buy something on Amazon, you don't really own it forever or some of these digital like that is concerning to me because I have like a digital collection on Vudu of like 600 movies. Now, a lot of that is because I bought the physical copy and it came with the digital code. So it's like, well, that's cool. It's a convenience thing, because if I'm at a buddy's house, it's like, oh, I'll just bring up my collection. You can watch this movie. But I, the digital thing, we're getting screwed. We got sold a certain thing. And the fact that things are being censored after the fact, things, movies like the French, mm -hmm. yes, or like the Blazing Saddles, you can't watch without suffering through some lecture. Uh, you know, they oh, should just. I'm at just the point deal. now where they're, they're going to stop. The, like, there's artisanal physical media, but I broke out my burner. I broke out my. Oh. I've got a burner that can burn 4K, so I, I'm I'm going to start burning my. I'm going to start making my own stuff. Screw it. Ooh. Screw it. Because uh, you don't own any digital copy. Copy You don't. Yeah. You download it, whatever. If it's part of that app, it can be ripped at any time. So uh, you don't own any of those copies. And the thing is, digital makes everything disposable. It makes it less important, less of an event. Uh, and we've seen that through music, uh, pretty much the destruction of the album. Uh I mean the destruction of the big band, yes, Taylor, yes, Queen, Taylor Swift. But like, there's no freaking. Uh -huh. There used to be ten bands that could sell out stadiums. Stadiums. They were part of our culture. It's just not that relevant in our culture. It's background noise, dude. Music used to be our internet. Like you, these were our voices. This is what this you know, and it was bigger than film. It was bigger than fucking TV. It's bigger than anything, yeah. and it's still there. It's just not as relevant. And all the bands they're trotting out are getting really fucking old. Hey, I'm excited. I'm going to go see the Scorpions in Vegas. They're fucking in their 70s, man. I wonder what backstage at a 70-year-old Scorpions show is like. You know? It's probably ice packs, massages, like taking a nap. I don't know. They're don't, drinking glu glucosamine drinks. Yeah, glucosamine. I don't think there's like piles of Coke anywhere, okay? Yeah. The grandchildren exactly. are in the, there, you know? I think that's... That's what it is. I mean, props on them for surviving. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go see the Scorpions. I'm excited. But um, love it. No, that's that's what film is turning into. It's like it's gonna be around. It's not gonna be as relevant, which kills them. Absolutely kills them. And that's why you're not getting uh, this influx of a lot of new talent because there's a finite number of talented people on the planet. There just yeah. is, and they are going to go where they can get the most of their talent. It used to be, am I an actor? Am I a musician? Now it's going to be something else. Now it, it might be those same things, but it's like, I'm not going to go to Hollywood. I'll just do it on my own. It was interesting. Robert Meyer Burnett, we've been doing this show on Mondays called Versus. I, I got to have you on one time if you're if you're available. Uh, but it, it's, um, R&B was on and he was talking about how 
the art form of the 20th century was cinema movies. Yep. The art form of the 21st century, which we are currently in is video games far surpassed in terms of revenue, uh, more culturally the zeitgeist with certain demographic, not ours necessarily. Only thing I would disagree yeah. with Robert on is I think music was a little more important than cinema. Yeah. In yeah, the 20th century, especially the latter half, especially like go to the fifties on music was right. more fifties to yeah. Fifties to 2000 music was more important, like to, to culture, to younger culture for sure. I, I guess the thing that, that sort of irks me more than anything is the death of a counterculture. You know, I mean, we could talk about the death of shared experiences. I have a friend, April Wright, who's makes these documentaries about like the movie palaces are gone. Drive-in movie theaters are a shell of what they used to be. Used to be 6,000 drive-in movie theaters. Now there's like 300 in the entire United States. And and like the, it's what she's, how she connects is, this is the death of shared experiences. Things yeah. we would all go do together in and we would gather and have these experiences not on our phone not on the internet we would have these experiences in the real world and and it's just it is disheartening to see for me the death of a counterculture like the fact that like i am not the fact that like i will be targeted and this happens to you a lot too as like you have these ideas i don't agree with and i'm like yeah it's called counterculture you know, yeah. it's question everything. It's like, I don't trust. I never trusted that the government is like trying to do what's good for us. You should always uh, look at it, look at, look at things that are being done with uh, skepticism. And the fact that the journalists are not skeptical, that is pathetic. And to me, the cult counterculture, remember like every city you'd go to Gary, you'd have like the local rag, right? So you've got like you know, the San Francisco Chronicle, you got the LA Times. And then there would be SF Weekly, LA Weekly, and they would have like freaking life in hell. That's how Matt Groening started, right? Remember the life in hell? Yeah, in and, and the San Diego Reader, read it all the time. Yeah, yep. San Diego Reader. Okay, that was it, the San Diego Reader with the LA Weekly. And then Detroit, we had uh, the Metro Times and they were always counterculture. They were always like standing up for the little guy. They were always like skeptical of politicians, hated politicians. There was that book. Question What's everything. That? Remember that book? Question yes. everything. Yeah, it was always in the front at the Virgin Mega Store at Borders or anything. I mean, yeah. that that yeah, that that was it. You're absolutely well, right. The, no, the like it, counter go the on. counterculture. I think is here with what we're doing. Yeah, partly, didn't go anywhere. But it's it's just disheartening that it's not well. I'm like, please, yeah, I want to hear your thoughts. There, there is a saying in Hollywood. You probably have heard it. If you can't beat it, eat it. If you can't <laughs> oh, no. beat it. Eat it. Sounds gross, but it's true. And that's what happened. Hollywood ate the counterculture. And now Hollywood is eating itself. So they just bought it. They basically bought it. They they saw the counterculture and they just act, you know, hey, we're on your side. We'll start some DEI. We'll start some protesting. We'll make some activist statements for our corporations. We're we're on your side. We're your friends. That's they, and they exactly. fucking fell for it. They fucking fell for it. Yeah. And now they're all lockstep. Companies aren't even competing against each other, you know. And uh, that's that's not even at the heart of the free market. This is it. it this is some weird Frankenstein, uh, you know, uh, God oligarchy of corporatism. You know, that's 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 what we're we're dealing with right now. And uh, yeah. thankfully, the audience is getting sick of it and moving away. And and something yeah. else will happen. So you're right. The like fucking Republicans became counterculture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christians became counterculture. They did. It happened. Family. It flipped. Family yeah. became counterculture. You're gonna see kids with that, not a single tattoo. God bless them. You know? <laughs> Especially with the tattoos we're getting nowadays that look like, you know, just like somebody drew with a big pin on you. But um, there's no art at all. Sorry, they suck. Um, Pete Davidson tattoos, fucking lame. Um, I'd, oof, God, uh, not enough drugs in the world will make me think those are okay. But um, yeah, it's starting to happen. It's starting to, uh, to flip on its head, and it's interesting, and I like it. And then there's you know us old dogs who are just like, I didn't fucking change. Maybe that's not good, but yeah. I didn't change. That's you know? the thing. When I have, I have people come after me that I've known for years, and my sense is they've met me and we've hung out like friends in the space, right? 
but they never ever read anything I wrote, never watched any video, never watched when I was on television. So they never paid attention. They're just like a guy. I'm a guy that they knew. And they're like, I can't believe how much you've changed. Like you didn't know me then because I am no different than what I was in the nineties or even the eighties when I was doing film threat, which was a counterculture thing and still is, you know? So I don't know, man. So that's what these just, gates are. You know, for, for one, the gates come from Watergate. I think most people know right, that. Right. Yeah. And gamer gate yeah. was kind of the first like culture. Uh, I can't say culture war. Cause I will say the first shot in the culture war against a cultural revolution, a collectivist cultural mm. revolution. Razor Fist is way better than I am on this stuff. Go yeah, watch his yeah, stuff yeah. on that stuff. But that's basically what it is. And uh, it started out with, uh, you know, Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian and, you know, basically screwing journalists for a good review, little little sexual payola. But it turned into something bigger. It turned into, wow, these were like really fun spaces where we didn't care who was here as far as gaming. And this goes for any nerd space. We might test you a little bit, you know, uh, but you're always welcome. And we, we, we want to hang out with you. But it, it turned into a bunch of activists coming and going, you need to change. So difference between newbie. No problem with a new fan who's like comes in curious going, man, this stuff looks awesome. Please tell me about it. And then you'll have a thousand people sharing their favorite thing. And it's a wonderful thing. Then you have the fucktards who come in and go, this is all wrong. We're going to change it. You know what? Go fuck yourself. No, we don't want you in. We don't want you anywhere. Near. You don't sound fun at all. Okay. Including. Speaking of, speaking of fun, X-Ray Girl's gone. She's gone. the queen of fun. Uh, it's uh, her, Canadian, of her fun. Canadian internet uh, decided to take up some Canadian health care. <laughs> Trudeau found me. I'm sorry. Uh, but no, the, the activists are no fun. They're fucking no fun. Nobody wants them around. They ruin everything. They're a bunch of angry people with fucking personal issues that, like, honestly, nobody wants to be around. And and thankfully, people are starting to figure that out because their arrogant asses decided to go on, like, streams uh, a few years ago, a year ago, six months ago, and freely talk about their not so secret agenda and admit to like, I don't know, we'll pull up the clip later, not hiring white people, which is, yeah. I believe, discriminatory and against the law, <laughs> you know? And and once and what what people don't realize, and I don't know the exact law because I, I I only half remember it from a few years ago, California changed the laws. To, so they could introduce DEI. So you would say this stuff's against the law. Well, maybe not necessarily in California. I don't. I can't remember exactly what they changed, but they definitely tried. Uh, and I, I can't see them not succeeding. They've succeeded with so much, you know. But they've definitely tried. So and a lot of this stuff is based in California, so they can get away with it, and they have because there's no judge now. Uh, you know, no, this is how the activists win. Because they they either take something over or destroy it. Either way is a win for them. That they are completely happy. So you introduce DEI into a free market society. You act, absolutely undermine it. You fill your uh, political uh, your, your judges who are supposed to be impartial, who are political hacks now, and just side on whatever side political they are on. And you undermine the entire system. And you undermine confidence in it. You undermine confidence in voting. Guess what? Activists win. Activists win. I I just voted last week. I've I don't miss an election, a midterm or whatever, just because it's the proposals in California, the state of California, which are always some grift or let's start a new program. It'll only cost X billion of dollars, and it's supposed. There was something on the ballot about. Yeah, yeah they'll I, they'll come I out was, with so, they'll come out with something called protecting children, and it's actually like lowering the age of consent to nine or something like that. So uh, you know. <laughs> I read all of those. I read all of those. It's a joke, proposals. but it's yeah. funny because it's probably going to be true someday. So fight that shit tooth and nail. It, it's sad to hear you say it, but I think you're right. I think you're right, man. It sucks. No, every, every hey. it's always the opposite of what it sounds like. Border and security law means let's open the floodgates and let everybody in. Oh let's God. go send some boats to Haiti right now. Look, don't call them illegals because that would be insensitive 
Hey, people should be asking Bill Maher and uh, Susan Sarandon if uh, when's their next vacation to Haiti, by the way. Because they came out with a Haiti is already great because uh, I think Donald Trump said it was a shithole five years ago or something like that. Oh, my God. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, it is real disappointing. Bill Maher is a real disappointment in the sense that I always thought he was counterculture. I always I didn't see him as left or right. I saw him as common sense. In I've watched him since the 90s and, um, you know, watch his show. He is so out of touch and it really has come out in that club random because he gets some really good guests and so i'll watch some of those shows on youtube he is so colossally out of touch it's like he does he is he just live on a compound in beverly hills he has a driver so he doesn't drive he it, like look I, I, I i've driven by those houses right if i can if i go through those neighborhoods oh he um, has a fucking huge house he is yes. so out of touch I mean, he was complaining how he couldn't get like the the you know permits to be able to put solar on his house or do some sort of. I thing remember that. And, and like, yeah, that should tell you something. The fact that he hasn't woke up. The, the scariest thing was when uh, PBD was on there, Patrick Bet David, talking about Newsom, and and Patrick Bet David did the best thing ever. He was just like, oh, so what? Okay, he just let him talk. He let Bill Maher talk, and it was pathetic. And then who else was on? Who also? Uh, schooled him about some uh, Roseanne Barr. Roseanne Barr had to tell him what the WEF was. Bill Maher didn't know what the WEF was. He, he just seems I should just like qualify. I mean, like, get you shouldn't even be on a show. Well, it also shows he's got, uh, uh, I say 21, it's an over exaggeration. He has 11 writers. It, it, it's 11. Un- I, I feel like the only thing he knows is what filters through his writers, and then he al- already has all these assumptions about the good guys and the bad guys. That Thing with Robert De Niro that happened recently. Oh, I, I loved it. it. I, 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 this is great about free speech. I loved it because Robert De Niro looked like a retard. He, he, like I'll, an I'll absolute, you, he is an adult pretender. He is an empty headed fucking moron who can't say shit unless somebody writes the fucking words for him. Like, great actor. He's in some of my favorite movies. Complete fucking moron. Like, but a lot functionally retarded. Are, okay. Functionally are, retarded. Uh, room temperature IQ. But that thing was the. Dumbest conversation because it was Robert De Niro talking about he would never play Trump in a movie because because he doesn't see any good in him. Do you realize tick off the list of the types of characters? I know. (laughs) That's why he's. (laughs) It's like murderers, killers, horrible human being. Like every single Cape Fear, Cape Fear. So that character has more redeeming qualities. Then Trump, Robert De Niro. <laughs> it's the, it's the weird thing. Like Trump also come out, come broke. out wherever you are. Yeah, just like so. You look at all of his roles. He look gravitates towards evil men, and you know his perception of Trump is based on only what he sees through a certain lens. Right? We all know that because I I have friends like that that just don't. I just whatever happened to question everything being that was that was to the default setting for at least most of my friends and you know just the world really changed it's weird hey we should talk about comics and movies and tv at some well point. we are we're talking about robert i mean if you want to find that clip nah, like later on he gets called he he can't answer a fucking question straight when he gets called out what was what did he get called out on again chris towards the end where he's like he just refused to answer it Oh, Twitter. I forgot. I what was it? Uh, I just saw chat. The... Maybe you know. Chat, help us. Chat, help us. Chat. <laughs> oh, we crime in New chat. York. It was crime in New York. He was asked specifically about crime in New York, and he just wouldn't admit there was crime in New York. He's all, it's it's not that bad, and uh, you know, and and he didn't know that the National Guard had been deployed in New York subways. Okay, so because so was... all the things. All the things that were that Trump was accused of, and all these uh, Republican governors are accused of, they are fucking that. Okay, here's how you. It's called problem reaction solution. It happens in entertainment. It happens in conspiracies. It happens in the real world. You stop. You stop uh, arresting criminals, <clears throat> and you let them out of jail. Crime goes up. You stop. Def- uh, you defund police. Crime goes up even more. People cry out for a savior. The state comes in and saves you with the National Guard. 
Like, do you not see what's fucking happening? That's exactly yeah. what they're trying to do. Okay? And that's why I left California. You can't protect yourself in California. If somebody came and, like, hit hurt one of my kids or something like that, and I blew that guy's brains out, I'd get in tr- I'd go to jail protecting my kid. Or even hurt the guy protecting yeah. my kid. I'd go to jail. I almost went to jail for pro- protecting my customers from a psycho in my shop. Ugh. So, uh, and, and if it wasn't for the cool cop who kind of like coached me through my responses, which he wasn't supposed <laughs> to do, uh, right. um, I, I would have, I would have. So yeah, so, sorry to get real, but that like, the, we talk about it in pop culture and they're, uh, they're undermining every aspect of it. You know, I was on uh, Piers Morgan a couple days ago. It was awesome. They had, he had a guest great. on before. You have to watch his guest on before. If you want to hear some psych, this is where it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's political ideology fundamentalism. When you just refuse to see what's real. Like, I just want the truth. Okay. That's all I want. Like, like it or not, I want, I want the truth. So Piers was, uh, who's not the, you know, who's not the bastion of, uh, of, uh, you know, counterculture, the current counterculture. Uh, I wouldn't call Piers based, uh, but, um. He was fighting back on the guy saying, oh, there's no such thing as the culture war. It's just made up by the by the Republicans. Oh my are, you, God. are you fucking kidding me? And then <laughs> the left, this guy's hardcore on the left, says, all you guys are talking about is Snow White and Hollywood and stuff that doesn't matter when there's children starving and there's wars. It's like, well, for one, who's starting the wars and who's starving all the fucking children? But yeah. um, it does matter, and the left understands that. That's where this guy's like completely disingenuous. They completely the left completely understands how important art is to culture. And that's why they've owned it for so long, you know? Uh, and it, it was good to see Pierce fighting back, but he, like I was listening to that guy. I almost had an aneurysm before we went on and just talked about the Oscars. I was like, listen to this guy going, what the fuck? We might have to go over that at some point. Cause it's, I think it is, it is the mentality we're fighting. They know it exists. They, this dude knows it exists, uh, but he's just going to deny it now. That's going to be their new narrative. There's this no culture is what, war. This is what bothers me is those types of people who are unwilling to debate or have a conversation. By the way, I pitched a bunch of panels to WonderCon. Oh, and in Anaheim, mm-hmm. rejected all of them. Oh, every oh. single one. And you would have brought people to WonderCon, and it would have been fun. WonderCon is, uh, yeah, yeah. Our, I, our, our I mutual mean, friend asked me if I was going. I was like, I can't even be bothered. Like, uh, yeah, so I don't know. I think that does not bode well for me for San Diego Comic Con. Um, thankfully, Alan is getting me a press badge. I think I'll go down for one day just to hang. But um, it's disheartening. I always love the exchange of ideas, including things I disagree with, because I want to hear what that argument is. Or you know, and you know what? I don't care if I sway you or not. But like this sort of like you know, just everything being exposed. We can discuss it like adults. And I kind of feel like people on that side don't want to even have the discussion. Nope. Nope. Because to them, the politics is settled. Yeah. It's settled. They're right. We're wrong. Yeah. And that that that's a bit of a problem. So we got to fight back at that. And, and then, you know, when Sweet Baby Inc., which is, again, just a symptom of a much greater problem, uh, shuts down and tries to shut people down. They used to have power back in 2016. They have no power now because just fans started speaking their mind. They just turned on a microphone, uh, you know, tur- get, got their internet connection, had their microphone turned on their camera and spoke their mind. And there's thousands of us now. And there needs to be thousands more of just regular fans going, no, no, this used to be a really fun space until, I'll use your language, space, until the Fucking activists came here and fucked everything up. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's that's pretty much where it's at and where it's going to stay at. And it's blowing up. You know, and you know, at Comic Con, you you could walk through WonderCon. They have all their DEI panels. By the way, they the, they've been labeled whatever diversity panels. They've been there forever, ten years yeah. longer. You walk yeah. by. There's five people in a panel. Chris does a panel. Yeah. It'll be full. Yeah. It'll be full. Just, It'll be fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like there's more of an open conversation, you know, when you have like different ideas that uh, are different, even types of people that have different ideas that can just talk amongst each other. I don't know. I, I, I don't know where it went. A lot of it has to do with the people who do the programming, I think. And, um, you know, some of them are really cool, but some, some of them, yeah, but, but th- they're, 
they're 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 lost with the woke woke vi- the woke mind virus is almost terminal. It's almost yeah. terminal for anything that's fun. Uh, Unfortunately, I I would yeah. have to agree. It's kind of sad. It's sad uh, to see it go it's that way. Fear based too. Yeah, like, people it, well, actually fear it. Well, yeah. Imagine going to a panel where you're talking about diversity and inclusion, and it's just a bunch of people on fucking walking on eggshells, a fr- uh, uh, telling other people not to offend people while trying to be not offensive to each other, knowing that each person they sit next to has a fucking knife out ready to just uh, put in their back or the front, whatever. Uh, yeah. Instead, you have a Chris panel where we'll tell jokes and not give a yeah. shit because I know the people I'm with are cool and people are laughing yeah. and having a good time. Mm-hmm. There's your difference. You're right. It's fear-based, but it's it's not just, it's fear of the ideology and fear of their right. ally. Mm-hmm. yeah it sucks it just sucks we're in this place where you know like I, look i've had conversations with dante in public where he and i are like kind of whispering some of the things we're <laughs> saying to each other because we're out in public we don't know who might like walk by and overhear us talking about some effed up thing and or we think is kind of effed up and then someone hearing it say like, you got like so it's just weird that like that so it's weird because when we'll like we'll you know carpool uh with each other to like a movie we do that every week and our con like we just go nuts in the car like i we we should probably record it at some point you should Um, (laughs) car conversations (laughs) with chris hell yeah yeah better than james corden singing Uh, and then we we get out in public and then we're like we kind of have to curb our speech it's weird like it's um it's weird and it's sad that it's that (laughs) way but it is that dude uh so I'm I'm gonna uh, could be on unsubscribe podcast donut operator, and uh and Brandon Herrera vote for Brandon Herrera in Texas. By the way, he's in a runoff. A YouTuber's in a runoff with some uh, uh with some rhino, which is odd. the AK guy on Twitter. Follow him on uh, uh and and Eli from. So we're we're having breakfast because they all kind of live near me. So we're having breakfast, and we were talking about like hey what we've gotten away with on on live streams, including uh. You know, Gab McGinnis uh, whipping out his little pee-pee or dropping right. a dropping a <laughs> paging doctor. Fuck it. So, but we're using the real word word like in the restaurant, and like we didn't care. <laughs> a bunch of people <laughs> turned around. We just dropped up that hard f. <laughs> we just kept talking. I didn't give a shit. I don't care anymore. I don't care. I'm not gonna whisper anymore. If somebody gets well, offended, it's... too bad. Too bad. This is why I love dive bars. Because dive bars have a certain demographic. Yes. Well, most, mostly drunks. But um, it, it, like where I go, it's just like nobody gives a, nobody cares. Nobody cares. And people are based and, uh, m- you know, blue collar to a point And just like, I don't know. I just love it, man. I love it. I love, that's why I love the dive bars. That bar you, you go to, uh, even though it's filled. Fiber. Yeah, it's filled yeah. with a bunch of nasty, filthy Dodger shit in there. Right, uh, that's true. It's, yeah. It's still, a, it's still a good bar. It's so it's a lot for hanging fun. out for this a pool table, you know. There's there's uh, needs to get uh at least sugar free Red Bull because I can't like monsters is like right. God, I'd rather drink petrol. Um, Shout out to the bartenders there, Mercedes, Sharice. Not going to be getting Tony. a monster sponsorship or a Red yeah. Bull one. So yeah. Yeah, Red Bull's not great for you either, but uh, but right. Oh you know, yeah. You know, oh oh yeah. We're we're gonna be that's a sponsor, right? Who's yeah. a sponsor? Oh, GG Sups. GG Sups. That's like yeah. they're, they're going to sponsor me for my gaming streams when I eventually get around to it. So it's gamer Ooh. water. Yeah, I might be able to find a uh, when my did my award show in December. We do that every hail year. GG Sups. Um, we we got a sponsor. Liquid Death is a sponsor. Oh yeah, the we, water, right? It's just, just water. water. Yeah, that's but good. I didn't I didn't realize they have like you know carbonated, uncarbonated, just yeah. flat, right? Bubbly and then water. They got, flavored waters you know i didn't realize yeah. this they, they came with a ton of cases i had to give it away that's cool at the end, which is great i still have some but uh, i love the can because it looks like oh my god look what that guy's drinking it's it's just water, water. no it's good branding you gotta have good branding good packaging am i right ladies <laughs> all right uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
All right, I was just gonna put All this right. up in front of me. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, GG subs. Yeah, the, uh, we've we're gonna we Our got G a whole subs. commercial planned, uh, uh, oh, showing off my gaming skills. It's gonna be pretty. Uh, hopefully, it's funny. It's funny Ooh. in my head. I don't know, it'll be funny if, in execution. If Perry does it, it will be. I By the way, Paul shout out to Perry uh, for his Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. You know his his the the. the I, I, sorry, I I don't know anything about Dragon Ball Z. Somebody sent me a Dragon Ball book, which I'm gonna probably read, Holy. but. Uh, the the creator wow. died, and uh, he did this tribute before FNT, and it was like, I know nothing about it, and it was heartfelt. It was so good. It was so good. We got hit with a copyright claim. Don't care. Keeping it up for because uh, he worked so hard on it. So uh, well done, Perry. Um, all right. So do you want to find uh, libs of TikTok tweeted this out? It's been seen by like oh. four million people. I'm sure you've all seen it, but we're gonna cover uh, more. Uh, a woman who was hired to do a Black Panther game. Um, what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, saying that she uh, doesn't hire white people. That's racist. So this is this, I, I, this is where things are blowing up, right? Um, yeah. Uh, culture war wise. Uh, John Stossel uh, tweeted out a video of Eric July talking about the Oscars. Elon retweets it, which is pretty fucking cool. Yeah. And then uh, Jeremy, the other Jeremy from the quartering, is talking to, I'm forgetting his name, is it Grums on Twitter? Sorry. Uh, who's been exposing all the sweet baby ink shit forever. Uh, and and Elon signal boosts that, right? And then Libs of TikTok is now in, and that's being signal boosted by Elon. And there's your difference. Like, old Twitter would not have done this. This would have been suppressed, banned, uh, completely so this is where the tide is turning, just with one social media platform going off the reservation. A bit. Not completely, by the way. Just a bit. Just a bit. By the way, these, these companies are in competition with each other. They should all be uh, on the opposite ends, you know? Uh, right. So I think it's important to go over this. I don't. Did you find it yet? I have the video uh, from Loves the TikTok. Yes. So. Yeah. yeah. Drinker responded to it. I responded to it. Uh, every everybody we know has responded to it. All right. Uh, so this I mean, is so again. Yeah. Oh, go on, Chris. Can, can I just say? Can I just say real quick before we play it? In a in a in a in a world that is professional, this person should be fired immediately. This person should be straight up fired. Look at that smile on her face too. She's happy. And it is the thing that has been to me. How do you know if something's racist? Well, racist. Well, let me just say this. <laughs> well. If, if it's just real quick, just real quick, it, it, it showing up uh, on time at work is not racist. Crosswalk single signals are not racist. The stupid, whenever they, they're trying to write, you can literally look up a, it's, it's, it's like a, um, what were those things where you would fill in the blanks? Um, it's, uh, Mad you know Libs. Mad Libs. Yeah. yeah. It's like a Mad Libs. You could just put in anything and make it racist. To me, it's like if you replace the race with another ethnicity, race, whatever, and it sounds racist, it is racist. And this, I love that, like, in one of the things from the Sweet Baby, this journalist, they added context, like, yes, you can be racist against white people. Oh, yeah, it got community noted. So. It got community yeah. noted. Good, because this is leading to a bad place. There is, there is, you know, they always talk about real violence in the world. There is real violence happening in the world. Because of these attitudes have taken root, these bad ideas, these terrible attitudes have taken root, and it's justification for being cruel to others. And it is, it is, I, I just, I, I can't believe this person um, will remain in, employed and no one should buy this game. The marketplace will decide. First yes. of all, I don't think the game's going to be very good. I don't, I don't expect this game to be very good at all anyways. But secondly, which Black um, Panther? That would be my very first question. Yeah. Is it T'Challa? Yeah. You know, but I don't think it's going to be good either. No, I'm yeah, sorry to exactly. interrupt. Anyways, you. sorry to like uh, pontificate. No, there, no, no, no. Like, you need to pontificate. That is your. That is why we have you here. Your knowledge. <laughs> no, and and like, who knows if the when and if this game is coming out? I didn't know. I know there's a Blade game coming out, Black Panther game. Uh, yeah. it, this could have been. This probably was in development since the m first movie came out. That's how long these right. games take. Uh, yeah. And this is why these AAA gamers, if they have brains, which I don't believe they do, need to back out of this shit now because nobody's going to notice for three years. 
minimum. Yeah. Like we talked about this with Az yesterday, you know, because uh, sometimes games, and he would know more than I would, and you would too, X-Ray Girl, they take, what, anywhere from five to ten years to make, you know? So it's not like a movie. <laughs> this this is a lot of money, a lot of people working for it to flop, and uh, that's not sustainable, no matter how popular this industry is because more nimble companies are going to start coming in and taking over you know uh and uh hope they do hope they fucking do so let's hear this uh very happy young lady talk about her racism i have a team of 21 right now uh for validate it's a pretty big team it's a crazy big team for indie games but who is your team validate has a team of mostly people mostly all people of color. We have no white people on our team. Um, I did that because I wanted racist. to create a safe you're racist. environment. Because you're I racist. The best way for an environment to be safe is to be around people who are just like me. Um, because you're I'm not racist. saying that white people in the industry are creating safe, unsafe environments. Yes, you are, because you're racist. Did. That is not what I'm saying. I am uh, saying th- no, that no, no, that goes against what you were saying, you racist. That's more there's a, I mean, there's so much of a flawed logic to a lot of this stuff. I, I feel like these people don't hear themselves. They just don't hear it. Um, there's I, a great, by the I way, just think I was watching dumb people are put in charge of things because of their skin color and their identity. And, and they're dumb. They're uneducated dumb. Sure, they went to school. They got a piece of paper and they're dumb. And that, that goes all across the board. That could be white people too. As a matter of fact, it's a lot of woke white women. But... Uh, who, who go to these fucking dumbass art schools, get robbed of $100,000 to get a piece of paper that's fucking worthless after they, you know, their brain is rot by some bitter professor who likes to have a power trip over fucking 20-year-old kids. Am it's, I wrong? No, no. It's um, interesting. I was watching Side Scrollers before I sat in this chair to do the show. Side Scrollers gaming show. Shout out to the whole team there. They're amazing. Um uh, Craig has been on your show, right? Like he's been on yeah. the FNT. Yeah. What am I saying? Sorry about that. Anyways, Craig's going to be in Vegas. A, they were watching a video of this person talking of being interviewed by a, and it was like um, blacks and gaming or something. It was really weird, but it was like, they were interviewing her about her game validate, which is a video game, a, which is a romantic. She said she loves romantic comedies. She did a romantic video game about dating but it was all only a certain type of black people which is like they were all overweight and had like piercings it was weird it was like she just kind of put herself in the game i guess it was look but um it was on side scrollers um you could probably get the link but it's she's done a lot of interviews uh so this is just this is just the tip of the iceberg this is just the little morsel that can be shared on social media for this but this is, I really think the marketplace is, is going to decide at the, in the, at the end of the day. Well, that's what we've been so. fighting, Chris, because you're right. Yeah. The marketplace ultimately decides. The customer ultimately always wins. Always yeah. wins. But what the corporatism has brought in is it fights against, for the first time ever since 2016, the, the corporatism has fought against the marketplace. And instead of reacting to your customers and their needs, you're telling them what they need and you're forcing stuff on them and they're just roundly rejecting it. And then the corporations just want to start a fight because they invited this cancer uh, uh, activist cancer in the door and they can't get rid of it. Good fucking luck getting rid of people like her. Like you said, Chris, tip of the iceberg. If they're saying this shit out loud on streams, what the fuck are they saying behind closed doors? Holy shit. Yeah. And everybody's scared. Everybody in the industry is flat out scared because a woman like this will run out and call you a fucking racist. When she, I mean, it's pure projection. As our good friend Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers says, those who preach the most have the most to hide. Mm-hmm. Good God. But I'm glad it's getting right. sick. Like it, it's, oh, sorry. Continue it. Oh, oh. Let's, let's interrupt. Hear it. To work with white people because they think that something made it okay, but it was really a microaggression. And no one wants to deal with that while you're trying to make it game. Nobody wants to and deal with you. Them. Nobody wants to deal with you. You're the kind of person we have to walk on eggshells around because you're so easily offended because all of your deep-seated personal problems, whatever the fuck they are. Nobody wants to deal with you. Uh, good mm-hmm. luck with your company and your grift, by the way. Jesus Christ. Chris? 
it's it's <laughs> it's just sad to see because I felt like when we got to the nineties, it just this wasn't even a conversation, right? This wasn't no like the, these types of conversations. These now people just, were around, but they were always yeah. considered fringe fucking weirdos. <laughs> okay, yeah. like and and that's it. But uh, you know, and this is among the weirdos. Among the nerds and the weirdos, we thought they were fringe, psychotic weirdos. Mm -hmm. And they still are, by the way. Just to point out that they're still fringe weirdos. We're freaking retarded. Uh, but as dumber as society gets, we are, we're ruled by cowards. Some of our leaders are cowards, but we're also ruled by the people who will not fight against this and not stand up to it. Oh, I don't want to make waves. I don't want to rock the boat. Well, boat's fucking rocking. But this is what Vivek Ramaswamy's book is about, Woke Inc., is he goes into that, like, the corporations like this because what they get is they get their cake and they can eat it too, which yep. is basically they can do all the horrible stuff that they do anyways, and they get away with it because they look virtuous Publicly speaking, that's what um, Elon was talking about when he said, you know, you know, appearances are appearances are everything in Hollywood. The yep. appearance of doing good, the appearance like, you know, what we look like. That's what people care about in entertainment. I mean, this is across a lot of industries. So it's like this is how you look good. But really what you're doing is behind the scenes. You're doing effed up stuff. Vivek has a lot of specific examples in there. Really interesting. He talks about this company he almost worked for and just how horrible it was and how blatant behind closed doors they would just talk about all this stuff. So I don't even think it's a lack of leadership. This is on purpose. This is all on purpose. Yes, it's it's on purpose. And they take advantage of cowards. They take advantage of risk aversement and uh, incompetence. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That's it. It all plays into it. They they need incompetent. They need their useful idiots. Yeah. They are. Uh, that was going to be one of the questions uh, asked of us. That wasn't on Piers Morgan. Was uh, you, mm. the, the specific question was uh, is I'm just Ken. Did Ryan Gosling own it, or is he just another Hollywood useful idiot? So I would have answered. Yes, Ryan Gosling owned it. I'm just Ken. That was probably one of the better things that happened in the Oscars. But right. everyone in Hollywood is a useful idiot. Every right. single mofo. Now, uh, I want to show you a community notes win. I, I, I ah, yes. This, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> does, does this tie into the Piersies? Uh No. Uh, I love the Piersies. Uh The Piersies? Uh yeah, Sure. That was on the show. <laughs> Sorry. It needs to be said, Sydney Sweeney's what? boobs are not that big. Community notes. Yes, they are. <laughs> and it's not about the size all the time. I think they're perfect. Perfect tits. Okay. Yes, it's, it's perfect tits. It, they, they aren't they're gi yes. ginormous. No, they're just perfect. And uh, guys are a better judge of boobs. I, I'll than, just than, say this I, I'll take any kind of boob, um, you know, IBTC. The itty bitty. I mean, you can finish that statement. I um, but I'm just saying <laughs> titty committee. <laughs> yeah, 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 IBTC. You never heard of that? Anyway, <laughs> of course yeah. I have. Of all types and shapes, proportion is important. Proportion is important, but we can appreciate all of it because we're dudes. all of it. All of it. I don't think it's it's like saying bad pizza, right? You know, like there's no I, I, pizza's pizza. I pizza's love pizza's pizza. pizza. Pineapple, jalapeno terrible, on love, pizza. It's freaking love, great. I, it's like Sydney Sweeney's bazoombas. They're like the Fun her pillows. pineapples. They're her pineapples. What, what did somebody call them on Twitter? <laughs> the calcium cannons. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Calcium cannons. Oh, I love it. Oh, uh, by the way, I don't want to, I don't mean to, I am seeing Sydney Sweeney this Friday. Um, it's at the Egyptian theater. There's an American Cinematheque screening of her new movie, Immaculate, which apparently she worked really hard to get made. And it's How a hard, horror Chris. film. Yeah, really hard. Uh, but she's going to be there for a Q&A, and I think I'll be filming it. And Atta boy. Uh, hey. Hey, hey, she's <laughs> riding the wave of popularity. She has great assets, and we appreciate Sydney Sweeney. We do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see it. Uh, and, and all these people are like, oh, my God, what's so great about Sydney? Fuck off. Okay, just go. Just he's a mid. Stop. Stop. 
just stop. Now, I did see anyone but you, Chris. I've already talked about uh, it on previous streams. It was fine, right? It was it's fine. Like, okay. It was fine. Yeah. Oh, the only, the only thing the the old, I'm talking about the lesbian destination oh, wedding that I found to be just complete fantasy. Okay, where they were just like the they were so nurturing. It, it was so such righteous. the DEI couple. So like we're gonna put a uh, racially mixed lesbian couple who just completely get along throughout the entire film. Yeah, <laughs> it was so generic and what? Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, that was the worst part of it. But yeah. I loved her and the 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 um chemistry she had with uh i always forget that actor's name glenn uh, uh something uh, probably good should looking play, guy the guy who should play green lantern yeah uh, I love, yeah from, from, oh uh, that's a great casting yeah yeah he should play green lantern he should play uh hal jordan um because he looks like hal jordan he's kind of a smart ass too which i love yeah i mean like dial that yeah. down a little bit because hal, hal jordan's not that much of a smart ass but uh right right yeah. but but um, I, yeah, I I actually met him at some awards event or whatever. Charismatic as hell, super nice guy. Took pictures with everybody. Did we just like have like you can tell he's the type of person that just appreciates like oh my god I get to do this thing where that's kind of weird when you think about it. And I get to make money doing it. This is awesome. Also, yeah, kind of won the gene pool lottery too. That helps, so. you know. But uh, like at least like. Be grateful if if the actors were great. If Robert De Niro would shut the fuck, like he he just needs an agent to go. You know, Robert doesn't do interviews because uh, he likes to keep uh, he likes to, he likes you to recognize the character and not the actor, which is what uh, Harrison Ford's agent used to do because Harrison Ford did not give a lot of interviews back in yeah. the day, um, and uh, that's a smart agent. That's a fucking smart agent. Agents don't do that anymore. Agents are political. Agents are pieces of shit. Uh, hey, Gina got hired to a new agency that's got some credibility for hiring her. Really? <clears throat> Remember, she was dropped by her agency immediately after Disney uh, went right. out and besmirched her career on purpose and should be sued uh, to oblivion for, by the way. Um, yeah, hail Gina Carano. Uh, so, yeah, the, it, it's really this 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 version of Gamergate, Gamergate much better than previous version. The reason this version is better is because we have a couple of veterans out there, you know, including our friend Carl. Uh, and we have a lot of channels that in our sphere and people in, and, and audience members in our sphere who've seen the evolution because it started with Gamergate. And this evolution is kind of it's what we're doing now. It's it's part of the culture war. It's calling this shit out. That's it, that's it. You know, people come and go. Channels come and go. But a lot of the channels that were driving Gamergate back in the day ended up being like giant frauds. That's it's a bummer, but that's that's how it ended. But it did evolve, and the audience stuck with it. That's the most important part. And we have a, I think, a much better, more powerful version because the uh, the allure of power that the access media had and the gaming journalists had before is now gone. Is now completely gone. Jeremy from the quartering still around too, by the way, um, and. Uh, and it's it's I think this is gonna be this is a snowball effect uh that I think is gonna be huge this year. Absolutely mm -hmm. huge and and glorious to watch because there well, will be another sweet baby ink. There will be another Last of Us Two that comes out at some point, you know, another game, another suicide squad kills the Justice League. Something else will come out to expose it. That sweet baby ink uh uh that that uh that account on Steam that is pretty much an aggregate to show you what what games Sweet Baby Ink is involved with, I think is great. I think it was just a simple thing to do. A simple thing to do to point it out. And we should start pointing out in all facets now. And remember, well, most of it is already within the companies. The companies do that. They don't need Sweet Baby Ink. It's it's the corporation that's doing this. Here's what's different is, and uh, great appearance, you and Drinker on, on Piers. That was awesome. I, fr frankly, because I've been listening to you for years, didn't hear anything new, you guys, you know, it's like, oh, I've heard all this stuff before, but here's the difference. It's going out to a mainstream broad audience. That's what's different. And the fact that it's bubbled mainstream is so huge. So we know all this stuff and it's just like, you know, I mean, you were on the Oscars watch party and I think we all kind of half watch the Oscars. I had to rewatch it the next day to like, just remind myself, like, 
like right when we got done with the stream, I just started watching it from the. Beginning. I had to rewatch just, stuff, and I only yeah, I had a bunch on mute because it was just boring. Right. It was mostly just. It boring. was boring. But the one thing that was really interesting, I, I met with a buddy of mine. Uh, we were talking, and he said, "You know that um, DEI stuff from the uh, you played the video in one of your latest videos. The thing I, I messaged you about it, which was the AI for it's called spell check for bias." Yeah. This friend of mine pointed it out to me. He goes, do you know that was announced at the Oscars last year? Yes. And I'm thinking like, I I, I don't remember because I, I, I didn't drink this year. I did drink. Uh, it last it was. Year. And it was uh, predating the Oscar rules, I I believe. Yes. And and, that, and again, that's been around forever. Gina Davis, uh, the script checking thing has been around for years. Absolute years. And you you provided me with my that video for my last my right. last video on this, and it was perfect. It explained it perfectly. It's like, thank you. I don't even yeah. need to comment on this. Right. I'll just show it to you without comment. And it's unbelievable shit. Um, and yeah, dude, it's uh, I, I, it's good that they're open about it. They're going to be a lot less open about it now because th they they got caught with their fucking pants down, and the tide has turned. This is where we're past peak woke Hollywood. We're, we're past peak woke Hollywood. We are. Hollywood doesn't know it yet, but we are the people who actually pay for shit. The audience, we're done with it. We're fucking done. Uh, you know, like it, it, it'll, it'll, I'd say there's so many things that's happened that we could go ban. That was peak woke Hollywood, like fucking Cleopatra, peak woke Hollywood, she Hulk, <laughs> peak woke Hollywood, the Marvels, peak woke Hollywood. But I think this week we, <laughs> we really get it because they thought there was a market for uh, a movie called, uh, hang on. Do, 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 do. Oh, should I should have my clip Cue ready. Cue Eric. Cue Eric. Oh, did, you, did you? The American Society of Magical Negroes. It's. I'm going to wear my chain. It's something. It's There you go. <laughs> this is a movie yeah. that could have absolutely oh, worked. Yo, yo. If there's a Kean Peel spit, uh, spit, skit. Uh, that that's pretty fucking funny on this very subject that they just could have made a movie out of. They that is, it's so end funny. End of story. Uh, uh, that Key and Peele sketch is so hilarious because it's two, quote, magical Negroes from the movies that get into this, like, into a, battle. Into a wizard, so, a magical Negro fight, which is so it's funny. So it's funny so good. It, it does make, it makes fun of the idea, which is worth making fun of, but, um, it's 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 funny. That's the better way to do. Well, you could have made it a, a whole a, a blazing saddle style comedy on tropes and just hit yes. every trope while you're at it, and it would be fucking hilarious. It would be it so would funny. Be but, but this is a serious no. movie where uh, I guess the white people are the villains. I'll say this: it is you guess? no one is going to see the film. Yeah. Except no for us. One is going to see <laughs> oh, and oh, I talked to a friend last night who saw it. He says it's terrible. Oh, yeah. There, one early review snuck out because there's yeah. an embargo, but one early yeah. review snuck out two months ago and said it was fucking awful. So um, it's it's awful. By the way, this person was not white and they said they thought it was terrible. Um, terrible film. Terrible film. Terrible, terrible. film. Did you yeah. find that video, uh, the Disney political one? Uh, yes, I did. Can we can we put that up because then that'll lead into our 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 Marvel discussion. Okay. See, we got a pro producer here, ladies and gentlemen. She Try does, my best. She does math. <laughs> she does math, not meth, math. Okay. Oh, math. yeah. I don't even know how one does meth, but you know. Oh shit! Oh, well, there's a lot of ways to do it. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, they're all they're all bad. It's oh my god. Bad. What? Uh. Uh, no, just some breaking news. Breaking news, gonna, ladies and gentlemen. We need to like dee 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 dee. This ties into what we've been talking about. Um, holy shit, this is um, this is tragic. Uh, I just put in the private chat. Someone sent it. To oh me. no! What? Yeah, oh, that sucks. Did you see it, Gary? Yeah. No. Oh my god. Yeah. This sucks. Oh, hopefully she'd be okay. They, uh, they, uh, we love Olivia Munn. We do love her. Yep. And, uh, that sucks, but hopefully they catch it, uh, soon she's enough. She's so young too. And we right? want, she's in yeah. her... and she's a mom. 43. Yeah. She's 43. Old. Wow. And 43. Smoking. Smoking. Yeah. Her Instagram is like her with her kid. She keeps the, her life with John Mulaney, her partner. Who was funny. 
That's the guy who was actually funny at the Oscars. By the way, you want to see even more funny? Watch, look it up, Gary. Worth it. Totally worth it. John Mulaney hosted the governor's ball and he gives this speech. He roasts the industry. I'm sitting here watching the governor's ball is on the official Oscars YouTube channel and John Mulaney hosted it. He, he it is. And he was better than Kimmel, right? Oh my God. Yeah. Not, he was, it was all nearly as good as a Ricky Gervais, but he was roasting the industry. He roasted himself. He talked about how stupid a lot of things the industry are. Okay. And I'm thinking like, why can't they? So John Mulaney, look it up. Governor's ball, John Mulaney. He look it up. That's okay. Uh, Mun says I'll, 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 her I'll, cancer I'll, was aggressive and fast moving, but was caught with enough time. I had options. Okay, good. Oh, that's good. That's good. So prayers out to Olivia Munn. Yeah. As long as it didn't spread. Right. Yeah. Now let's Sorry, get... I started to rail there. Gary. No, it's all good. That's all good. That's okay. that's a former coworker of yours and bud. Come on. I know. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um uh hey, uh, pull that video back up. The chat. <laughs> what did your dog say? Rough rough? I think there's um a delivery person. Rough rough? Okay. Oh, is there a delivery person for you? <laughs> oh no, my dad's here. Uh, Alan Ng's there? Yeah. Oh, Alan. shit. Well, he came to visit. To what, what is he doing there? What's up? It's a surprise visit. Anyways. <laughs> What's up, Pops? To the video. <laughs> to the video. Nice. What's the harm of letting activist investor Nelson Peltz or Jay? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Pause it for a Disney's second. Pause board. it. We, we, I should do a little setup just in case people don't know. This is from the Disney website, correct? X-Ray oh, Girl? Or, or X-Ray Girl's dog? I'll take an answer from either. Dog says yes. Dog says yes. Dog said rough. Uh, this is a Disney political ad to their shareholders. Okay. So just want to, want to, want to, like, this isn't some like rando thing. This is produced by Disney. So if we start it over. What's the harm of letting activist investor Nelson Peltz or Jay Rizzullo have a seat on Disney's board? The answer is simple. If they succeed, Value. Disney could suffer the same fate as other great companies. Oh, it looks like the South Park. <laughs> Wait, stop, boss. Boss, <laughs> that looked like the South Park thing with Bob Iger going, what happened to my stock? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that did. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. All right, hit play. Disney could suffer the same fate as other great <laughs> companies that Peltz has previously infiltrated, such as GE and DuPont. Which are Nelson doing Peltz better? has a long history of attacking companies to the ultimate detriment of shareholder value. His quest also seems more about vanity than a belief in Disney. Why else would he sell 500,000 Disney shares over the past six months in the middle of his proxy fight? Plus, he has no media Wait a minute. expertise. Pause. No experience. Pause. Uh, how, many, how many? Didn't Bob Iger sell shares too? I believe he did. I believe he yeah, did. 80%. 80%. 80%. Yeah. Okay. Unbelievable. Just wanted to point that out. Continue of his proxy fight. Plus, he has no media expertise and no experience in running a global entertainment company powered by creativity. Wait, wait, they pause again. No pause media. again. They, they, they showed a, a a closed dollar general or something like that. Dude, that, a family dollar, that actually want, makes me want to vote for Nelson Peltz because I'd love to see Disney with fucking boards in the window. Let's do this. Go ahead. No experience in running a global entertainment company powered by creativity. They said I have no media experience. I don't claim to have any. And then there's Jay Rizzullo, a yeah. former Disney employee who was passed over for a promotion nearly a decade ago. He hasn't been employed since leaving Disney. And the last time he joined the board of a media company, the stock tanked. What's more, Peltz and Rizzullo have teamed up with another disgruntled former employee, Wait a Ike minute. Perlmutter, who has... Oh, before we get to Ike... He didn't have a job, but the last time he worked, <laughs> this thing is so disingenuous. By the way, that guy got passed over for political reasons. Uh, and uh, if you go look at the media experience of the board, you won't find much of the board of Disney. Oh, uh, you know, you 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 want to know what else you won't find much of Disney mm. stockholders. <laughs> you won't find very many Disney stockholders on the Disney board who have media experience. Could, could, could I comment real quickly of on course. the style of the style of this video is being done to instill fear. 
the music that's underneath it, the um, the the whispering narrator's voice. It's like they it's it's like the tone of a lot of those crime, true crime documentaries that are on Netflix. That is the style. They're aping that style. It's to push fear and division. It's a disgusting tactic that if you are in the true sense, media literate, if you can you know, look past that, you realize what their agenda is in making a video in this style. Sorry for my long-winded explanation. But if you notice stuff like that, you it can't affect you because you're like, I know this is BS. I see through it. So anyways. No, it, it is. And, and yeah, this is straight up a political ad. It is a political ad for an entertainment company that has dug their own fucking hole and they are so fucking scared. That this guy might, and I don't even think he's going to succeed. I I don't. I, I don't think he's going to succeed. I, I don't have a lot of hope that shareholders who have their stocks buried in their 401ks and probably don't even fucking know they're investing in the Disney uh, are going to be able to change any of this. Uh, we, we need more normies to pay attention. Flat out. That just needs to happen. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not a judgment. It's just that's what needs to happen. And I, and I don't think it will. Play. Another disgruntled former employee, Ike Perlmutter, who has his own lengthy record of destructive behavior inside Disney. Perlmutter has a well-documented grudge with Disney CEO Bob Iger. This yeah, because he fucked him over. Because and- yeah. Bob Iger called him a fucking racist, dude. I'd be a little pissed, too. He's like he tried to stonewall Black Panther when Ike Perlmutter tried to get a Black Panther movie with Wesley Snipes off the ground. And, and Ike Perlmutter said uh, female action figures don't uh, sell. Uh, checks notes. Do that fucking weird gay Twitter thing. Checks notes. How's Hasbro doing? Not very good. Yeah. Not very good because they tried to sell too many female action figures to uh, dudes who don't buy them. Hit play in the boardroom is more than disruptive it can be destructive especially at this critical time when despite all of these distractions bob Iger and his management team have engineered an ambitious plan to build disney's future positioning the company for a new era of sustained growth and value creation the last thing that we need right now is to be distracted okay pause in terms of our time uh who who distracted disney was it nelson peltz or was it bob Iger who left oh about a month before COVID. By the way, we are very close to the four-year anniversary of San Francisco, and I believe Los Angeles shutting down uh, along with the rest of California for COVID for two weeks to slow the spread, March uh, 16th, uh, 2020, day I will never fucking forget. Uh, and he quit, uh, brought in a, a, a fall guy, never really left, wouldn't let him have his office because he likes to take two showers a day. Remained as uh, chairman of the board. Was only really gone for months. Came back after uh, the fall guy, who was an idiot, implemented everything that Bob Iger greenlit. And now he's back to lord over his own failures. Who created that distraction? Was it Nelson Peltz? Mm. Was it the audience? I'm pretty sure it was Bob Iger, Kathleen Kennedy, Kevin Feige. And uh, wh- whatever dipshits. Oh, that, that guy's fired now. The the guy who uh, greenlit all the live action remakes uh, that are now bombing. Please continue. Right now is to be distracted in terms of our time, our energy by an activist or activists in fiscal 2024. You've been, you've been run by activists, 20- Bob. Bob, your fucking company is an activist company. They can hit play now. Fiscal 2024, they expect cash flow to exceed initial projections and have set a target of $3 billion in stock repurchases. The board also declared a cash oh, dividend of 45 cents. There's your buyback. <laughs> there's your buyback. <laughs> I've been there, dude. I've walked right up that that, uh, that building. Yeah. Been there, too. That was the offices. Correct. You got the seven dwarves or people of height issues. Yeah, which you can't, which you can't, which you. <laughs> what do you call that? Uh, uh, midgets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember midget tossing. Oh, my only complaint about the gentleman, and I think they did it as a joke, is they 
they they call it there's gypsies in it, but then they later I mean they make it a joke, but they're like you got to get right because we're called travelers now, and they call them travelers. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? No, but it's fun. Make fun of it. Make well, they fun they, of they do somebody. because the gypsies end up sticking, uh, uh, smuggling weed in, uh, in 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 Mary, <laughs> in Mother Mary. Uh, so yeah. By the way, I'll talk about that show later. It's really fucking good. You should watch it, Chris. Hit play. Oh, and a forty. Five cents per share, an increase of 50% versus the last dividend paid. After a year of significant fixing that made way for a new era of building for growth. How, the did, how dare they show Tron? Tron legacy. Creating lasting long-term value. This value is reflected in the recent stock performance, improved operating income, as well as the strategic moves recently made. Oh, it ain't that far up, baby. Such as the collaboration and equity stake in Epic Games. Okay, pause. The upcoming. Uh, pause. Was, pause. The collaboration with Epic Games and Fortnite, when Bob Iger was specifically asked when this collaboration would start, he did not know. It was just to fool fucking stockholders. Yep. Th that is quarters off, financial quarters, years off, if it happens at all. And who's good? And who knows if people are going to give a shit about Fortnite in two years? They certainly do now, but who knows? Okay. Made by the company, such as the collaboration and equity stake in Epic Games, the upcoming release of Moana 2. Oh, that'll Harris do it. Swiss, the Eris Tour coming to Disney Plus and more. The Disney board is always open to good ideas from engaged shareholders. But a quick glance at Peltz's white paper will reveal a surprising number of questionable proposals that reinforces clear lack of experience in media. Not to mention a litany of factual misstatements and quite a few proposals so that what are they? is already implementing. Nelson Peltz and Jay Rizzullo threatened to jeopardize the incredible progress the company has made since Bob returned as CEO. Hit pause, hit pause, critical hit pause, hit pause. They just showed two movies that are Fox movies. Those are two fucking Fox movies. Those aren't Disney movies. And they finally go in. So Moana, that's, that's going to bring them back. Man, I can't, uh, you know, my kid, my youngest kids are like, I can't wait for Moana, dad. No fucking kid said that. <laughs> this, this ape movie too. I'm not super excited about it. I, you know, those, I'll watch it because I watch them. Yeah. They're fine. I think they're fine. all like, they're yeah, okay, but they're not. It looks like digital. It looks like a video game. I'm sorry. It's not. It, I, it doesn't look real to me. I miss Roddy McDowell. Roddy McDowell. Mask. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. I, they're, they're fine. They're, 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 they're okay. I, uh, they're not bad. They're not bad. They're just not like memorable. <laughs> you know, they're like, man, this one, I'll, I'll watch it. Cause I like Planet of the apes, but uh, I like the original. Uh, what would you call a five film series? I, I love the OG. I even watched the yeah. TV series with the horrible masks. But yep. uh, I, I love so the original based on a French book uh, and this first script treatment was written by Rod Serling for uh, for the first Planet of the Apes, which was essentially a two hour Twilight Zone. Yep. Yep. It's in the, the original book. It's weird. If you watch the behind the scenes, uh, I've got like this huge box set of the original Apes films. And there's a really interesting thing. They did all these makeup tests, which were terrible, by the way. I'm glad they didn't go with them. But in the original book, the advanced, the civilization of apes was much more advanced. Yes. They had like helicopters and all this. And they're like, nah, we're going to scale it back, you know. Um, but probably for budget yeah. reasons. And it worked in the film, but the book's pretty interesting, actually. Pretty good. Yeah. I never read the books, but I, I'm just fascinated by the, all that BTS stuff. Yeah. Hit play. We're almost done. Made since Bob returned as CEO. As CEO. At this critical moment, we simply cannot let that happen. The choice is clear. Vote Disney. Vote white. Vote white. White <laughs> <laughs> people. White people. Vote the Always white vote white. Now, the thing that concerns white me people. is they are pushing so hard for this to go one way that that makes me really, really suspicious. Oh God. Yeah, dude, that uh, screams I mean, vote the other way. Yes. <laughs> that, that was, that was desperation. That is straight up panic. And honestly, yeah. I didn't, 
I, I'm not aware of this stuff. You got to go to the financial guys for for better information, to be honest with you, because I just talk about the, the the end product, right? The art form yeah. and and how it's affecting culture. But as far as the financial issue, don't know shit about it. And I never I, I think it's great that's made headlines, but I, I didn't I never thought Pelts would win. But like if I was a stockholder and I'd saw that so I, I'm automatically I'd be like, whoa. That was a bit much. Right. I'm going to look into this. Uh, unless you want some confirmation bias, which I'm sure a lot of stockholders are there for. And, I, and there's activist stockholders on both sides because Disney is an activist corporation. They are yeah. getting involved in politics. Always have, by the way. They've done some very fucking shady things in, in Orange County. Just ask the city of Anaheim, which they own at this point. But... um yeah, they're getting involved in national politics and social engineering and and trying to trying to work their way into the for, fucking Florida classrooms. Like piss off, you weirdos. Uh no thanks. And they in turn betrayed their core audience, which is something that will create entropy in your company. This this is a big corporation. It will take a long time if if it ever happens to be completely destroyed, but the entropy has started by betraying your core audience and there are now people who are like i ain't going to i am one of them i went to yeah. the only thing i liked about disney was disneyland and i would love to check yeah. out disney world but they were fun never set in foot in that place again ever been to yeah, orlando I'm, twice didn't even think about going it's sad because i used to have annual passes years ago and um i stopped and then that star wars land i happened and i i got to go to it uh for free because a friend of mine worked there it was so disappointing. Dude, it's not that Star land, Wars land. It is like not, generic some space thing land. It's dollar store space war. Yeah. That's what, the thing, <laughs> that's what it is. It is. That's what it is. It's terrible. Dollar store space Just go war. to Star and Tours. It, star Tours is like, the remember the old school one? You know, the, yeah. uh, oh, if you I'm never went to the old school, school one, the, the yeah. whole ride is on YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube, the old one from, from the 80s which is great. I loved the old yeah. one. It was so fun and it really sort of captured the spirit of star Wars and the new star Wars land didn't capture anything. It was just God awful. And oh, it just, it makes me sad. And then I just, but the thing is, it's the last, the, when I used to go there, one of the things that was cool about Disneyland is some of the old school stuff. Like you can still go to the Tiki room with all the, the, the ethnic stereotype uh, parrots that are like, wee oui, wee, oui, I'm the French parrot. I, I'm the, the, like, I'm the German parrot. I love it. I love it. It started so going downhill always, when they changed pirates, dude. When they changed they pirates. Gonna, when they changed pirates from like the men were chasing the women. When they were being pirates. When they were being pirates. Or, or like there is an area where you can go and a kid can get a shotgun and shoot. And shoot. Like the little shooting range. The shooting range. In front of, yeah. Is, Frontierland, so right, right at the beginning, like right, Frontierland, right and like Frontierland, the Frontierland. Yeah. That's not even a thing because it's very much. There's a lot of the original Disneyland that's very much Americana, right? Celebration of America as a country. All this. I mean, obviously, Walt Disney was a patriot. I predict all that stuff is going away little by little, oh. and they won't even announce it. Just wait. Just wait. I it's agree. Coming. I agree. And I think uh, Clownfish talked about this first. So I want to give them credit, oh, they did, but they, yeah. they want to drop, they want to drop the Walt from Walt Disney. They just want to call it Disney. Are you joking? Uh, I think that's, that's, that's where they're that's going. It. I think that's absolutely where they're going. Oh my God. I, I, it's, I would argue they've already moved towards that. Right. Yeah. So uh, I wouldn't be uh, surprised, but uh, go check out Clownfish has videos on those. Uh, uh, okay. Bo DeMeo. Bo DeMeo was a writer on The Witcher. Uh, was the guy who ca called out Lauren Hisrich's writing staff for not respecting the source material. So we're like, hey, that's fucking good for you, buddy. Good for you. Uh, he uh, took over uh, X-Men 97, which is a continuation of the wildly, wildly popular uh, cartoon series from the 90s. Uh, longest running Marvel cartoon series until that crappy Ultimate Spider-Man came out, which I didn't even finish or watch it because it's fucking terrible. Uh, and, and it, I think it beat it by one episode, but dude mm. captured generations. It was, uh, it was a blueprint. It was part of the, part of your nineties experience was that X-Men cartoon. 
just was. Yeah. Can't you can't mention the '90s without mentioning that X Men cartoon and how huge it was, and I would argue it made more X Men fans than the comics. And then the the X Men fans came and read the comics, and they're like, "Holy shit, this cartoon adapted the comics!" Yeah, you know, changing characters here, but the pretty much the through lines are all still there. Um, <clears throat> so pretty influential. So Bo DeMeo is going to take it over, and immediately says, "Well, I want to take it over because I'm a gay black man," you know. And uh, cue all the a- access media activists, morons who probably didn't even watch the entire series, probably have read half of a X Men comic that came out in 2017, uh, t- telling uh, us what the X Men are, uh, which is, and Chris has mentioned it before, it was a comic for misfits. Any yeah. co- any type of misfit, if you were a misfit, you could uh, really. Uh, it, that, that's how it worked. That's how, that's why it worked. It was a comic for nerds. They were the misfits. And whatever type of nerd beyond that you were, that was just an aspect of your identity, which we always talk about. You know, uh, uh, Bo DeMeo, if he, if he, he's, it's really reductive to just say, well, I'm a gay black man. Well, what, what else are you? Yeah. What else, what else do you do? You know, uh, it, it's, it's super reductive and uh, it, it's just a way to play victim. So uh, approaching it the wrong way. Fundamentally misunderstanding what the X-Men was about, which initially was a superhero team that they just didn't want to invent origins for. That was it. Uh, based on the atomic era and mutation. Uh, you know, uh, that's the that's the strange thing about Stan Lee is not it, it wasn't like there was tons of thought. Spider-Man. He's like, yeah, I saw a, a fly in a window. I didn't want to make fly man. Well, what about Spider-Man? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> It's so funny. I love his stories of how he came up with these characters, right? Like just, they're so simple. I I love it. And then the X-Men, the X-Men actually did technically have some of them, at least the original, uh, the original team had origins, but they were in the later issues and they would be like stories in the back. Do you remember? Like, Mm -hmm. I remember the, the origin of Cyclops, Scott Summers was really interesting. He was sort of this lost teen kid who had the, the, the glasses so his lasers went he was sort of his powers were just sort of emerging in puberty which i love that aspect that like the powers kind of emerge during puberty during puberty well it's storms you know in giant size x-men one we see storm young storm you know right pip, pip right. pickpocketing I, I love that. that that was I great love- and what a lot of people don't know is from the uh comics code era where you know after uh after seduction of the innocent and they had like comics just went and just it, it got really tame and crazy. Uh, Marvel reused a bunch of characters and ideas from that era. Just keep that in mind. Like Uncle Ben and Aunt May were uh, prototype characters in other movies. And, and when you start collecting, this is where you learn this. You learn that, oh, actually, there was a prototype Aunt May in this issue. And, and you know, the, you'll find out that the, the, those ideas were out there and they just reused them and added some more. Uh, but yeah, that the, we'd see the early parts of it, and I like that part too, uh, Chris. That's what was great about the X Men, and honestly, that that was for Generation X. We we weren't born when Spider Man and Daredevil and the Fantastic Four and all that was right before we were born. So we got to see the X Men get popular like in real time. So I yeah, I, I saw this character like I, I'll never forget this character Wolverine. It's like, dude, he's got like metal claws that comes out of his hand he's got healing power and he's canadian and he's short and he's weird but he's badass you know it's like yeah i'm down let's do this you know and and wolverine didn't really like launch into uber popularity until the very late 70s early 80s you know so uh with his little four-part uh miniseries by uh by frank miller which is fucking great by the way it's great but uh yeah that's what the x-men is x-men uh pretty uh best-selling comic book for decades like outsold Spider-Man, outsold Hulk, outsold anything DC, outsold Batman. Uh, the only uh, comic book in our era that outsold it consistently. Now, occasionally a, an issue would come out to outsell it, but consistent best-selling comic was X-Men. The only one DC one that outsold it for, for a short period of time, deservedly so, was the Teen Titans. It was the Teen Titans. But um, yeah, so he's fired. Bo DeMeo's fired. It comes out in one week. In one week, wow. social media scrubbed. Um, yeah, he stopped talking about. It. He was talking about it a lot. Uh, red carpet's coming up. He's not going to be there. 
And I doubt any reporter is going to bring it up to anybody. Just like with Victoria Alonzo. And, and I don't, you want to pull up the article real quick, uh, X-Ray Girl. Um, from the Hollywood Reporter. It's, it's, in, it's in Nooner. So we don't know why. Uh, in the article, it brings up at the very end an OnlyFans. Uh, a tame only fans. It was just like, it was like, uh, it wasn't uh full, like new, he, like his, his dick wasn't flopping out. Uh, it was just like shirtless pictures or whatever. And it's a couple years old and it's already been corrected on Twitter that that, pro, you know, that, that was an old account. So Disney knew about it. Um, and, and he shouldn't have been fired for that period. I, I don't think so. Unless there's something in his contract that says, you know, you can't have an only fans account, which I doubt, you know, they would probably say, and- only fans but like what does he do just talk about comics like oh well it's I, not like i, I don't know That's what I, I i've never yeah. been to only fans and never will be I, so <laughs> i've never been to only fans it seems weird like it seems weird I, whatever i mean it is so uh uh we read part of this article yesterday but yes he was fired unceremoniously a gay black man had to be serious so it can only be one of two things, but real quick, Marvel had no comment. Uh, DeMeo's representatives did not return calls for comment. I don't know if that has changed since yesterday. Please let me know if it has. Uh, and emails to showrunner yielded no response. It was a surprising turn of events on the eve of the show's March 20th debut, which is wow. seven days away. Uh, splitting with writers is a normal part of business for Marvel. Yes. And or any studio. However, it is unusual for a top creative on a Marvel project to miss a premiere or cancel press plans last minute, even if they've been shuffled to the side. Most Marvel premieres feature multiple screenwriters walking the red carpet, some of whom have been uh, who have been rewritten by other writers also working on the red carpet. Yeah, they invite everybody, which is like a nice thing to do. Right. Like, even though you've been rewritten, you were part of this process, come come to the showing. It's also to keep yeah. them happy and to keep them from spouting out. Yeah. Uh, Marvel announced DeMeo's hiring in November 2021, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he, uh, uh, by the way, it says the move was met with some level of excitement as the scribe brought his identity as a gay black man to the project. Uh, Th- this th- is kind of what we were talking about Chad, earlier. Chad, did that where- excite you about the X-Men 97 Sorry, Chris, no, go but on. Like, no, no, but it's just like, it, it's that whole thing of like, you identity is such a thing that you have to wear on your sleeve these days just to get hired in Hollywood where below the line people are being asked, quote, do you check any boxes? An exact quote from an agent to a below the line worker who just works on film sets and film and TV sets. This is, this is mafia type of practices <laughs> where is. you either have to show fealty or show that you're of a certain uh, a type of person it's so that they can exclude other people. I was chatting with a friend uh, before the show. I, I don't even know if I should say his name, but a very good friend from along from the eighties. Uh, good old eighties. He knows who he is. He survived. And, and like, telling me that like friends cannot get hired. And I'm just like, I'm just, this is what I've been pushing forever. Just make an indie movie. Just make an indie. Yeah, film. get off the corporate tee. Get off. At this the, yeah, point. don't get the regular paycheck is nice, and make an indie thing. You know, make an indie thing, or also you can just do an indie thing on the side. You know, uh, so many people get their value from from being attached to the corporation. They 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 just do. They're too scared to go indie because indie uh, requires taking a lot of fucking responsibility for uh, your own work and stuff. But if you yeah. really believe in your own work. That shouldn't be a problem. But uh, speaking of identity, a lot of people uh, uh, get uh, fulfillment with their identity from being attached to the corporation. You know, mm. industry boys and girls. Uh, it, it really it, it gives them value. That little name badge or, or that signature on that paycheck and being able to put it on their Twitter bio. And they're afraid that their fame is only attached to that corporation and they don't want to go out on their own and find out the truth, which quite frankly is that, yeah, you're famous because you worked for that corporation (laughs) and you, and you worked on that character that was owned by the corporation. Yeah. But I do, I, I do think there is a pathway toward indie success that can 
lead to even more, um, you know, fulfillment. More freedom, number one. More, for free number, more fulfillment, more freedom, <laughs> and, and, happier. And, and po possibly more money. I mean, look, I just bought a little Yaira package yesterday. Uh, I, I, I picked my cover. I picked my t-shirt. I picked my, I bought something else. I forgot. I just look good. I want to, I want to be able to just buy like a long box, a rip reverse long box. I just want one of those. I didn't see it in there, but I'm sure it'll come back. Cause he did that as like a perk and I missed it. Whatever. I, I, I like the Ripa model. I, I really think it's amazing what he's doing, but even like people like Trent Reznor have done stuff like that. He did that thing. Do you remember it was like a four CD set called ghosts? Yeah. He, he just said, broke away from corporations, started producing his own stuff. A lot of bands have done that now and it's more lucrative for them. So they're not in the limelight all the time, but they have their core audience and, and Trent Reznor is making more money off of it. Yeah. Amy uh, Man and, 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 and Todd McFarlane it. talked about that too with spawn. Like he could have yeah. taken the Spider-Man big bucks, but he went over to spawn and ended up being what, making a lot more money. Now he's a rare case because Todd right. is a good businessman aside from being, I mean, he doesn't like drawing that much anymore because he doesn't do it that much anymore, but be really fucking good businessman. Uh, and uh, good for him. But you're right. Like it's this is where the decentralization. If we break away from the corporation and things become more artisanal, you can you can make a good living and be happy, <laughs> and yeah. be happy. There's that Lynch video going around now on Twitter of some huh. producer fucking talking in his ear. You haven't seen this? Oh, I haven't and, seen. Oh, this. yeah. You're yeah talking it, about David it, Lynch. David Lynch. Yeah. Some producers Shit. like, hey, could you make that scene shorter? And he's like, shut the fuck up. Why? Yeah. He just goes off on this producer. It's great. It's oh, great. It's great. It's been it's it's gone around for like the last few months, but uh, yeah, I don't oh, even know I what know. he was working I... on. But he goes off on producers piping in his ear, and he's just like, "Shut the fuck up!" God, and that. and I bet you that happens a lot. That are uh, you kidding? That happens tons. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, wouldn't you want to be free of that? Some know nothing fucking producer that's probably some you know uh, niece or nephew of uh, the executive who went to some film school for six months to a year and got a degree, but doesn't understand art at all, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. So it's good to tell those people to F off as the scribe, uh, brought his identity as a gay black man to the project and made a point in talking to the press about how growing up as the adopted son of white parents with a Korean sister in a, in the South, made the X-Men characters and their struggles for acceptance by society feel personal to him. Well, good for his parents, by the way. Yeah. For adopting him. Stuff. So I'm an adoptee. And uh, there you go. Uh, his silence on social media has been acute as he was a prolific poster sharing X-Men tidbits as well as shirtless pictures of himself at the gym. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> that that doesn't bother me at all. Uh, for care. a time, he also ran a non-explicit OnlyFans account. OnlyFans. <laughs> OnlyFans. Flans. Uh, <laughs> Wait, it, like, an explicit? Is that what it says? Non-explicit. Non-explicit. Non -explicit. Non -explicit. Oh, okay. All I of which inspired the LGBTQ. No plus there. Publication out to declare him the sexy gay man writer of show, uh, of a show, and showrunner to know. Well, I guess not anymore. And we don't know. We there's no explanation why he was fired, and uh, maybe we'll find out. I mean, we did kind of find out why Victoria Alonso was fired, right? Mm. So uh, that well, they use the excuse that she went off and produced another movie for Amazon, which Disney completely fucking knew about and had no problem with until she started getting a little, uh, she called out her CEO during a glad event. That's what got her fired. Mm. That, that will get anybody fired by the way. And that's, that's the rules of the corporation that you signed up for. You start calling out the big boss, even though he agrees with you on fucking everything behind the scenes, he's going to go, well, I agree with her politically, but uh, she's a backstabbing bitch and she needs to go. That's, that's the truth of it. That's the truth of working in the industry and working for the corporation. And you need to know that. And uh, Victoria Alonzo got a little big, like quite literally for her britches yeah. and uh, was canned for it. <laughs> Even though she said all the right things and she checked all the right boxes you come across the wrong people, it's over. Now, there's a lot of speculation of what, what Bo DeMeo may have done or not have done. I have no idea. One of, so there's that possibility. 
that's a possibility. The other possibility is they sat down and watched it and it's fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. That's, wow. That's a possibility. Now, you tell oh. me, Chris, do you think Bob Iger and Kevin Feige are paying close attention to the animated series that's going to go on D+, plus, or are they all busy oh, with their God. other projects, and they probably didn't watch, they probably watched dailies, and it looked fine, but when they sat down and watched the whole thing, went, ooh, fuck. Is that I a possibility? I it, It's a possibility, but I have heard nothing. I have heard nothing good or bad about it so far so we'll see and it, like it's an animated show so yeah uh a lot of people aren't going to take it seriously but it's a big deal to marvel fans if there's any left like this is yeah. you know it's a big deal to x-men fans old school x-men fans uh when when they announce that that's it's not the worst idea they have announced it's like no this is actually kind of a good idea if they did it right which they won't and i know there's talks of like hey let's do spider-man too because that ended on a fucking cliffhanger and uh the answer is no fuck no Absolutely not. No. So you could take the article down. Uh, I, I suppose we'll find out. The internet sleuths will find out eventually. Bo DeMeo has been awfully quiet. So that, that, I mean, you know, would you want to run out there and start talking after you got unceremoniously fired a week before, even if it's just for, you know, like merit reasons? Yeah. Not really sure. I don't know. I, I The timing is suspicious. The timing is suspicious. Very suspicious. And and we fans are going to speculate. This this would be the conversation in the comic shop. Did you hear the showrunner yeah. for X-Men 97 got fired a week before it came out? That's fucking weird. Well, he probably got me too'd. Probably grabbed somebody's package. You know, that's that's the conversations that are going to be had. Is it true? Uh, no. And it's not fair to, to say that stuff, but life isn't fair. So there you go. Uh, I You know... I guess uh, the best possible reason was it's shit. He got fired because it's shit. <laughs> you know, things end up being shit. Yeah, it's weird because someone of his uh, identity generally doesn't get fired. And that was pretty kind of public, too, because the timing, again, something something is up. Something is up. Something is up. How long is that governor's speech where he's roasting people? Oh, it's like 12 minutes, but oh, I'm that's, saying that's, maybe yeah. watch it later. I'll watch it later. Just to see, like, it's really good. It's really good. You're like, why isn't he hosting the Oscars? That was maybe something of an audition, but um, how awesome. Like, John Mulaney, his, his special on Netflix now about his intervention with all his friends, he talks about, like, very blatantly about doing drugs and like how it sort of came to that point. It's really awesome special on Netflix. I think you would appreciate it in particular, Gary. It's pretty good. Excellent. Let's get to soups. Yep. How am I supposed cool. to? Skiz Spivak Esquire has gifted five yeah. neurotic memberships for $25. Hail. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey. The members, thank you. Uh, Quentin Collins for $20. Hi, Chris. As a fellow David Lynch enthusiast, I really appreciate the respect Denis Villeneuve seems to have for him. The scene of an ant covered corpse and the ear close up where a is a homage to blue velvet. It, it I mean, you could read into it that homage. it is. I don't know that it actually is, but a lot of Dune, you know, because it's sort of in the language, you know, the books have been around. The David Lynch version has been around. And I do think that Denis kind of, there are little nods here and there. So that that actually, I could see that. That makes sense. Arg, another name, Streamlab side for $20 a donation outside of YouTube. We appreciate that. I moved to calling the DEI uh, consultancies uh, Sweet Toddler Inc. and Stink for short. Uh, they make <laughs> all the current and former employees like the racist developer at Cliffhanger uh, stinkers. I, I they are stinkers. Uh, they stink. They stink up an industry, and and they're foul. It's just a foul a foul way of thinking, and it's obvious they they were completely brainwashed at some horrid university where uh, their parents wasted a bunch of fucking money, or we did, and then their debt was uh, forgiven. Tomok for fifty dollars. 
Uh, Gary, if you're wanting a, a, ma a manga recommendation, uh, how about Read or Die? It's only about four volumes long, good times. I say that's because I don't think the anime or OVA are on any streaming platform. Okay. I will check it out. Maybe. Somebody sent me Dragon Ball, so I got to read that. Very cool. Arg, another name for 1999. Got to get Brandon on FNT. Oh, we will. We will. We talked about it. We talked about it. I believe his his runoff election is March 28th. So if you were in uh, my district, which is Eastern San Antonio, and all, San Antonio, all the way to El Paso, it's fucking huge. It's uh, I believe the guy's name is Tony Gonzalez's district. He's the incumbent rhino. Uh, and uh, the Daily Mail's like running running pictures of Brandon Herrera, like holding giant fucking guns. And it's like, it's just going to get him more votes. <laughs> They're trying to like, this gun-toting YouTuber. And it's like, yep. Yep. Uh, Mohammed Alabani uh, for 250. Uh, Qatar, I believe. Qatar. Qatar pesos. <laughs> Sorry. When the lady said she doesn't want to hire white people, is this natural end result of DEI? Yes. Did she just say the quiet part out loud? Oh, they've been saying it a lot. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the diversity and inclusion is less white. And less white means no white, but less of any race. See, they won't stop there. Okay. What's the end game of this? We made things less white. Are they going to stop? Where's the next step on that progressive stack? No, they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. And, and it doesn't make okay. Cause then you like they, they talk their language othering, they're fucking othering people. And they, and they're othering by saying, Oh, you can't be racist to white people. That's what the Kotaku uh, fucking hag said on Twitter proudly, proudly. And remember in South park in, uh, and and uh, the Kathleen Kennedy episode when Cartman's a black a black woman, she's like you you can't be racist against white people. They're just a bunch of hum fucking honkies, you know. Like that they made a joke about it, and they're living the meme now. So so like South Park is not only prophetic; it's starting to fall behind with its parody. <laughs> it's starting yeah. to fall behind. Angela Richter has gifted five neurotic memberships for twenty five dollars. Hail. <laughs> Oh, dog stream. Brit, My dinner arrived. Britt Cormier for $20 says, people that think microaggressions are real have never experienced real aggression. When you use that type of language, all you could think of is, damn, you've had an easy life. Yep. Somehow she's the victim. Oh, and it's just moving the goalposts, too, because simple questions like, why do these people like this? That's a microaggression, really? You've not... As you said, you haven't experienced real racism at that rate. No. Uh, LKDTA, two parts for $20, says, uh, love the nerd erotic and film threat channels. Thank you, Gary, X-Ray, Girl, and Chris for what you guys do. Any of you guys watch Blue-Eyed Samurai? Drinker had high praise for it. This show seems to do what the channels like uh, the other one are asking for. Did female characters well Better, better than One Piece, in my opinion. I, it wasn't better than One Piece. I liked it though. Yeah, I, I, I have not seen it. Everyone's rec. It's hard for me to do TV with all the movies. I got to see, but I did Gary. Not sure we'll get a chance to talk about it much today. But I saw Three Body Problem every episode, and, uh, it's very good. It's very good. Ex I have nitpicks. There's a character in it that is the most. Like they took like, well, let's just take all the woke stuff and just put it in one character. And this one character is just so annoying. Girl boss, know it all. It's just like, oh, she's just cringe. One of the scientists. But as a science fiction story, as someone who just loves sci-fi, uh, going back forever, I love the, the, you know what the tone of it is? I figured it. And, and the, here's the problem. The first two episodes are kind of slow and you have no idea what's going on. By the time it gets to the third episode and it's revealed, even what the words three body problem mean when you understand it is so effing cool. And it's sort of like the tone of it is like lost. 
it's this global, very global uh, ensemble cast, right? It's uh, it, it's it starts in night in the 1960s during the Cultural Revolution in China, where one of the characters sees her father, who's a scientist, being shamed and beaten to death on stage. It's a comment on now. It that scene is a comment on now. It's so well executed. So you see the motivations of the woman who sees her father shamed and murdered and how, how she feels about this cultural revolution. It's so, amazing opening to that show. And then it, it, it it's sort of like, I, I really like the show lost initially until it went nowhere. And what sucked about lost was, Hey, uh, look at this mystery box. Uh, forget that mystery box. There's a new mystery box and uh, there's this mystery box and we're never going to, nothing is going to ever make sense. The, cool thing about this show is there are mystery boxes and they all pay off they don't wait very long to tell you like you, a, a mystery will be part of it like a, a scientist is seeing these weird countdown numbers in front of their face first of all how is it happening why is it happening why is it only happening to specific types of scientists what is going on no one knows what the hell's going on it all makes sense it's all revealed it's very thoughtful and scientific and there's just i mean there's a cringe scene where two Two female scientists are at a bar and a white dude comes up to him and like, uh, it's just like, a t you can just write it yourself. It's so dumb. But like, so like maybe there's like 10 or 20% that's cringe. And then I really got into it. I, I really want to watch it again, actually. Um, I think, I think you'll like most of it, but the way they set it up, this thing could go forever. This show. Which kind of well, bums me out. Did, did you like, I, did you say you saw all three episodes? Is there only three? No, all, episodes? all eight. I saw all, all, eight. all eight. Okay. Sorry. So I've seen misunderstood. it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. So um, I really enjoyed it, Gary. It's like it's like Lost if they actually paid shit off, and it's smart. The characters, there's a lot. There's a, it's, like I say, a very. It reminded me of Lost in the sense that like there's people from all all types of people from all over the world. And it makes sense because it's a global issue that's being dealt with. And I, I, I'm not familiar with the books. Never read it. Never read it. Now I really want to read the books because the the way I, I, I obviously no spoilers. I'm being vague about everything. I'm just saying you have to get to episode three to really kind of figure out what the hell's going gotcha. on. And once it reveals itself is freaking awesome because part of it is in a video game and also some of the special effects you can tell like with these when you have eight episodes there's like this is the episode where everyone's talking and it's kind of boring and then this is the episode where we spent a lot of money on special effects so it does have like a couple episodes that are like we need to get to the next episode but what i love is they don't keep mysteries for very long something's a mystery why is this happening it pays off and i i i gotta say i'm i'm hooked and i'm gonna watch it again and I didn't think I would feel this way. Cool. So cool. Um, now I'm dying. You gotta, you, you gotta you watch to the it. gentleman. No, I hear that's good. Where is the gentleman? It's on Netflix. It's the best show oh. I've seen since one piece. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. On my list. Drinker recommended it to me. So, but three body problem. Um, and what sucks is I can't talk about it with anybody. Like I'm being very, well, it's vague. not out for like a month. It's not till the end of the month, but, but I, I, I really, uh, you know, when you see it, I think it's where I watched it in two days. Oh, I I'm going to, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to check it yeah, out. For I, sure. I, I couldn't wait, but it's like, okay, Game of Thrones guys, let's see what you got. And I do think that they're better when they have a, uh, when they have a like finished a book, <laughs> a finished book. And I'm not even like, so I'm not going to I'm trying to catch myself up with like, okay, this book series, but the fact that opening scene in during the cultural revolution in China is so much a comment on now. I love it. I love That's it. That's awesome. And it, it's, it's very subtle. It's subtle, but it's like, it's right there. Cause it's all these young kids, you know, after like people with these old ideas, they're just going to destroy everything. And you're like, Oh shoot. This is a comment on the culture war. Now mm -hmm. it's awesome. It's really awesome. There you go. So, and it comes out end of March. So end of March uh, Josh yeah. Kelsey has dropped 1999 and does nothing. Walks away because that's what Josh does. The Green yeah. Skull. Two parts for $40. Says, uh, I'm the grandson of Disney's first princess. The live 
uh, the live actress that was rotoscoped. Oh, the live action actress who was rotoscoped with uh, Oswald and Lucky Rabbit as my grand was the little girls for the late 20s Disney and save Disney. And, uh, well, I got stories. When Uncle Walt, Walt lost his creation, Oswald, my grandmother saved Uncle Walt, the rat's origin I know. I know things, uh, my dudes, uh, you want dirt? I got a dump truck of Disney dirt. There is so much more, Gary. What's up, Chris? Hey, hey, send it to me. Email us, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm uh, easy to contact. Go to my website, Film Threat. You can see uh, content. All right, we also, right after I was done with the gentleman, um, the new Shogun was up. Yeah, I just have to, I just have to get Hulu. I, I, I resisted it because I just feel ugh. there's ways to. Well, for until they crack down on it, there's ways to share passwords, dude. I, okay, well, all right. Uh, yeah. but um, it was like mostly a dramatic setup episode, and at the end, you see people getting vaporized by a cannon, which is fucking, it was kind of awesome. <laughs> it was brutal. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, just body parts. Pew! <laughs> <laughs> Dudes, like, missing legs and arms. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Uh, Hanzo Swart, 01, for $10. Gary and the Critical Drinker on Piers Morgan proves we're winning the culture war. Well, I mean, uh, I guess we were on the UK telly, which I was unaware of. Uh, so, Paul, the uh, one of the producers on... Piers Morgan watches FNT and uh, Drinker invited me to come on with him. I, I got the invitation through Drinker. And yeah, you like we had Mike Barra on from on Forbidden Frontier from uh, Ancient Aliens. And he gave some really good advice because he just came from an engineering background. And he, and he knew this guy named Richard Holglin. And he started writing some stuff for a website. Next thing you know, he's on Ancient Aliens. Right. And uh, what he said was, once you start doing that stuff, you say yes to everything when people ask you to do something you say yes uh you absolutely say yes and uh, i wasn't sure what i was getting into you know like it could have been like a debate it could have been an ambush it wasn't that way by the way at all and i think it's good that if if we feel strongly about our principles and 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 what i listen i don't i don't have all the answers chris doesn't have all the answers we're just giving our opinions that's all it is but if we feel strongly about this we're not afraid to go talk about it anywhere. And uh, I, I feel that way. I think it's, I think it's good to get uh, our message of common sense out there and bring, and bring it back. And, and if, if Piers Morgan, however you feel about him, I'm like, I don't agree as gun politics at all. Um, like if he's willing to listen, do it, you know? And, and yeah, in some cases you might get ambushed. It's going to be disingenuous, mostly with the mainstream media. You got to be careful of that, but you can't be afraid of it. So, well, Gary, your stand on common sense makes you part of the alt middle. You're right? part of the far you're part of the far middle now. The the you're far middle. <laughs> you're gonna get lumped. I'm I wanna make that a Which thing. Which side is yes. it far? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. don't even know. Well no, but yeah, but that's I, it's because I've always been a guy that like you gotta earn my vote. I'll vote here, I'll vote there, I'll vote independent. You gotta earn it. And I look at the proposals, I look at what people and I vote no on a lot of stuff just because I don't I I want less government control. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, the, I think the alt middle. And I the vote far no. Middle, I vote no on every tax hike. <laughs> I, same. Every no, proposal. No, no, it's no, just like no. oh, this is the program for this that will never don't go care. away. No, nope. it's a billion a year. I always state of California. You just know this. Vote no on all the proposals. Not not every. You got to be careful because sometimes if you vote no, you're actually voting yes. So you yes, be, you, you do have to read, read the stuff. It. You have to read yeah, it. So I read them all. I've been a very conscientious voter. Always. Uh, uh, the infamous El Guapo on, uh, for $10 on the Streamlabs side. Being a dad, I love this dad stream with dad rants. My kids and I have read the Doom books and enjoyed the movie, but my youngest daughter says, great, the next movie is going to be about uh, Chinese Odyssey uh, oh, based uh, gore with your plethora of buckets. Can I have? Can I have? Can he have? <laughs> All one? he can say is, "I sent one." Is I have to? I owe Alan a bucket. I have three buckets. I'm just gonna give one to Alan. I have the buckets that were at the Regal because they came with these really cool drink, these drink things, a Dune drink cup thing. It's like a Stanley Cup, but Dune. Anyways, <sighs> um, <laughs> uh, Jim uh, Reaper for four ninety nine. Uh, Gary is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. 
Exactly. Absolutely. It's not like me and Chris were just catching up and talking. Uh, golden nuggets for five British pounds. Damn it, Gary. Uh, now I can say that I know a guy who met Piers Morgan. Good show. You and Drinker smashed it. Thank you. Yeah, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't sure how I was going to do. They, well, they prepped us. That was nice. Yeah. They, they gave the us. The producer prepped you. The producer uh, gave us some, uh, you know, like, here's the questions. Here's the parameters. And, <clears throat> and then said, don't hold back in any way, shape, or form, which I thought was nice. Uh, Kale, Kale Auth for $10 says, Hail, the world has turned into Courage the Cowardly Dog. Woke uh, <laughs> Estus Bag cry. Eustace. Eustace Bag cries for DEI, Muriel, and it's up to Courage to save his invaded home. Stupid media, you made me vote bad. Ooga booga booga. Big Raj, $1.99 for a thumbs up sticker. Hail. Uh, Vapor Trails for $4.99. Good job on Pierce. Thank you very much. Uh, how do you feel about the world thinking your name is Nerdrotic? That's fine. I, I, actually, I think that's fine. <laughs> oh my God, can you clip that thing of just peers saying, uh, no, Derotic, uh, that was so, I was dying. It's like, that's good. Get the brand out. Get yes, the brand out. I liked it. I was like, good. Yeah. Do it. Uh, Rebecca Gold, uh, Ian, for 10 British pounds. I directed a horror film in the 80s with Michael Ironside and produce, and the producer was Indian. He was wrong so many times I and never admitted it. He was wrong. So I know what you're saying. Ian, uh, who does make films, by the way, Ian oh, uh, went to the UK meetup. He also came to the Dallas meetup. He flew out from the UK. Nice. Hail, Ian. Love wow. you, brother. Big, big based Doctor Who fan who fucking hates everything that they've done. That's where we met. Uh, piece of utter destruction for $199. Undiscovered country or Rathacon. I like uh, oh. six. Ooh, that's. <sighs> Those are probably the two strongest. Some of the ones like Star Trek three doesn't hold up as well. When you watch it now, search for Spock does not hold up as well. Some of some it looks, seems like they just, I mean. Edge to Rathacon because of Ricardo Montalban. But yeah, uh, dude, no, you undi go Rathacon. undiscovered country is fucking fantastic. It is. It's a really good. Fantastic movie, and I've watched it just as much as I've watched Wrath of Khan. Yeah, I do like Undiscovered Country, Purple Klingon Blood, or whatever. Yep. Uh, Vapor Trails four ninety nine. This is the counterculture. You are the counterculture, Chris. Yes, you are. Always have been. Yeah. Uh, Carl Suburban. <laughs> Instead of Carl Irvin, it's Carl Suburban. Oh. That's pretty good oh. for ten dollars. <laughs> Dance halls like the move in the movie Marty and social clubs like Lions, all designed to give people something to do at night. All mostly dead, dying since TV came in with the late fifties cultural Darwinism. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, we we are getting the interactive experience and the group experience, but we're just doing it with each other. Another thing we couldn't bring up on Pierce because of the time. Uh, I was going to bring up that you know, I guess the difference because he was complimenting us on on being you know, kind of the media for, for, or critics, like drinkers, a critic and, and more of way more of a critic than I am. Right. Cause like there's certain shit I'm just not going to watch. I, I'm not going to sit through a fucking drama, like rare exception, like the father, which are, which is fabulous, but like dramas, I have no desire to see them to how good they are. Biopics don't really do anything for me. I don't like people just sitting around especially when it's historical and I know it's true. And I know like there's just a bunch of bullshit going into it with drama. If I want to remember a drama, if I want to remember, I just remember something from my fucking life with movies. I want wizards. I want fucking spaceships. I want superheroes or a drug deal gone bad. Like that's pretty much my jam or Western, you know? Uh, and, and, you know, I want to see something I wouldn't normally experience that. That's, that's so, so, you know, I'm not going to have this, this, uh, you know, vast knowledge of watching absolutely everything because I'm not going to watch everything. I, I just not interested. I'm interested in genre. That's my that's my jam. Uh, but um, the whole point being was that you know he was saying that that we're we're the critics, and I'm like, no. I mean, the difference is that we interact with the audience. You know, a Piers Morgan show doesn't talk to the chat. You know, no, no offense to them or anything, but they don't talk to the chat. Greg Gutfeld doesn't talk to the chat, you know, uh, it, you know, however way, you know, it's, it's not like back in the old days when, you know, there was 10 people in the chat and we could just sit there and have a conversation for three hours, which was fucking awesome, right, by right, the way. Right. Miss that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, 
it, it was, you know, you, you, I see it and I see how they're reacting in real time. And it's not different from when I worked at a comic shop and I was behind the counter or any retail where you're in entertainment, where you're working behind the counter and you're just shooting the shit all day about all the stuff in your, in your building, all the movies, you know, music or whatever. That's what it was. That's what it is. And that's how you, you find out how people actually feel. Uh, you don't need to market research or any of that, you know, just talk to the audience. They'll tell you what they like. They're not afraid to at all. And that's, that's where the interaction, that's where the shared experience is. You're right. The water, water cooler show, uh, is gone. It's gone because the binge model, binge model is fucking terrible. I, 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 it's terrible. Like the gentleman, if it was released weekly, people would be talking about it every week, especially the way it builds up. And, uh, then you could binge it when it's done. But then everybody start like the buildup happens. Everybody starts watching it at the same time, and then everybody's there for the finale, right? Well, That's what I, usually happens. I was talking to an industry friend. We were talking about the binge model, Netflix, and all that. And the thing that is missing is the feedback loop. Here's the feedback loop and how it would work. And this actually worked in the show Lost. You know, so Lost, very popular show, huge success in its first few seasons until it kind of meandered but you get two pieces of feedback one the ratings how well are people how many people are watching it how are they responding and two there were message boards there were message boards about twin peaks in the 90s yeah that's how popular twin peaks was well, that's and why it became so, a cult ex a success yes right and and also the way production was shows would be released and they'd still be in production on shows. They'd get an order, then another order, then a mid season or the next season, you know, they take down, but like that feedback loop allowed them to go. This character is not very popular because characters did get written out of lost because they just didn't resonate with audiences. Yep. And I feel like the show three body problem might've benefited from that. Now, um, I'll say that it's based on a series of books, which I have not read, so I don't know, but um, it's an ensemble cast. And uh, well, you're right. Not everybody Here, makes it. Not here's the other part it. of that problem. Here's the other yeah. part of that feedback loop problem. Yes, because mm -hmm. you're seeing it in real time as it progresses over each week coming out at the right. same time. We're roughly everybody who's really into it. will watch it at the same time. They will also right. spread the word of mouth on this show. And then people will be able to jump on before it's finished. And then that gets you the crescendo for a good show, which propels it into the stratosphere. And yes, you get that real time feedback. Also, yeah. it feels like you spent more time with the show. See, with streaming shows, The Gentleman is very cinematic. It is like a movie. Okay. So it's going to be two years minimum if we get a season two. I think it will. But uh, they set up everything for a season two. It's got a Good. It's got an ending. There's a journey at the end, but it could definitely go to season two. Okay. But if you spend, if you just binge it in a weekend and then it's two years from now, it feels like forever. But at least if you've yeah. spent two or three months watching it and it's, I still think two years is terrible. They need to break that. Yeah. They need to c come down on the budgets a little bit. And, and cause with television, it's a character focused medium. It's not a cinematic medium. It's well, everything yeah. is character focused, but uh, you can take more time with the movie and be more, they're, they're different beasts, right? You want to be character driven in, in television and, uh, you get to know these characters, you spend time with these characters, but then you stop giving a fuck after two years, even if it's a show you like you, you th that's not sustainable yeah. either binge or not waiting two years in between a show, not sustainable at all. Yep. Uh, Johnny cash for a dollar 99 that he just left a dollar 99. Johnny, you're one of the greatest one of the greatest artists who ever lived, Johnny Cash. Uh, Ish fine for two yeah. British pounds. X-Ray Girl looks great in Stellar Blade Demo Leak. Amazing. I agree. Incredible, X-Ray Girl. All far for $10. PBD just brought on Cuomo as part of the That being right. said, has a fucking perfect take on it that Cuomo is from CNN. Cuomo faked uh, being with the coof. Uh, Quovo's brother uh, sent a lot of uh, old people to their deaths. Uh, I think it's a fucking terrible move. I think it's a terrible, and I and I think I, I think he's a fucking fraud. I think he saw the. I, yeah. think, I think he went. Oh, my opinion's over there. I need to go find it. Yeah, I think he's a total fraud. I I, I I'm annoyed. I think he's a dimwit. I I've, I've heard like clips of stuff. He's. I never liked him when he was on CNN. No, he's like the Hassan Piker of CNN, dude. That's what he is. 
he covered for his brother. What a scumbag. I, I'm I'm not a fan. And I like PBD, so this is huge. I do too. But then but then look at like uh, uh, Jeremy had the best take. I was watching GNG Daily this morning, as I do when I'm half awake uh, getting coffee. But um his take, like, yeah, what about Jack Murphy? Right. Never even t- just gone and then doesn't doesn't address it. Yeah, Tim Pool didn't have a leg to stand on. That doesn't change the fact that Cuomo is a fucking bad fit. I mean, people bitch about that Adam guy, right? Who's not right. nearly as bad as Cuomo. So you're right. gonna have it, it. By the way, Cuomo tries to, like his Tucker interview. I saw all that. He he's trying to glaze it, like, oh, it was just different people with different positions. You have a short memory? Go back and watch his clips on CNN and yeah. how vindictive he was towards half the country. And you think he just turned that off? Or so, yeah. so was he being a fraud then? Or is he being a fraud now? Authenticity is the currency of the present, of the fucking now. The guy yeah, ain't authentic. He's fake as fuck. I think PBD yeah. is authentic. I think that's an authentic guy. I think that's just like a, a dude trying to figure shit out. I, I got no problem with him. I don't think it's a good fit. I think he's going to be on once a week, whatever. Not my decision. His fucking show, and it's big. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, whatever. Yeah, same. You know, it, it's not like I have, w- w- you have co-hosts, I have co-hosts that we do not agree politically. <laughs> we do, on, on a lot of yeah. stuff. On a lot of yeah. stuff. But, uh, the the baseline is we will talk to each other. We're fans, and we'll break this stuff down. And a lot of us call it the woke shit. But when it gets into like policy and stuff, we actually don't talk about it very much. I I don't know the politics of some of my co-hosts. I know the politics of other of other co-hosts that that aren't mm-hmm. along with with mine. I don't give a shit. They're my friends. But uh, this is a different beast. This is fucking Cuomo, dude. Uh, mm-hmm. it, you know. And, and yeah, what's a Candace Owens too? Yeah. Uh, bully hunters. Can't forget bully hunters. What is, I don't know anything about Look this. into it. It's it, bully hunters oh, was, no. uh, was, uh, uh it's, it's a fucking Gamergate thing. Like way oh, back, no. way back. Uh, people could change their minds too. And I'm open to that. Absolutely open to that. Um, mm-hmm. I think at least Candace Owens, uh, not the biggest fan of hers, but she's been pretty consistent since then. Mm. Pretty, not totally, but I I don't watch her anymore. I, just clips that come up on on Twitter and stuff. Mm. Uh, Griffin Eagle Seven for two British pounds. First time super chat. Hello, Exodus Agu. Sam. Hi. Thank you though. <laughs> Chris, you got to go. Uh, well, no, I'll stick around okay. because I got to talk to you. I, I have stuff to talk All about. Right. Off- oh, yeah, okay. we, we do. We got to talk about stuff. Yeah. yeah I got to talk uh, about some stuff. Yeah. I, I got to eat, but it's all good. Um, Lynn Jones, Kelly, uh, Mrs. Kelly Jones. Hi, Lynn. What's up, Lynn? Hey, hey. For $5 once, uh, had a friend who said Bob's are like Christmas presents. They never know. You never know what you get until you unwrap the package. Ayo. They are. <laughs> they are. I mean, are they real? Are they fake? Does it matter? I don't know. Uh, Jason Cook for 50. <laughs> My wife and I have come to the conclusion that old 23 plus episodic show made TV great. Stargate, Battle uh, B5, TNG, DS9, uh, Farscape. Uh, the 8 to 10 episode streaming shows with one year in between seasons we just lose interest. You're right. You're right. There's a place for prestige TV. I prefer it as storytelling when you're adapting a book or a comic. I think it would be a better place for comic book stuff if done right. Daredevil proves that. Daredevil, like, that's where if if everything was done like fucking Daredevil, it would be better. But you could say that about everything. But that that's yeah. where it belongs. But not everything. I think you need, like, procedural stuff, too. Like, so, uh, as was talking about Reacher compared to the gentleman they're so different like reacher's procedural kind of show right um the gentleman is very cinematic it's very guy richie it's very british british so if you like lock stock and two smoking barrels and and all the guy richie stuff then you'll fucking love this uh i love this stuff because it's character based and it's typical guy richie it's these characters from different classes are put in 
insane situations that go sideways. That's the show. It is um it is succession. Uh and it's okay, for one, you don't have to watch the movie at all. I would recommend you do because it sets up the world. Now, it, it exists in the same world as the movie. Uh, just in a different, just with different characters, right? But if you want to compare it to something that normie Americans would know, it's succession with people who murder people, but they're more likable. Does that make sense? <laughs> so it's succession with people who fucking murder people who are way more likable than any character in succession, including the drug addict. So, uh, dude, the first episode is a fucking banger. It is. It's got a guy having to do an apology in a chicken suit to a drug dealer. <laughs> it's fucking funny. It's and it's funny. It's a funny show. It's a funny show. It's got Vinnie Jones, man. Come on. As a father figure. Ajax Skyline for nine ninety nine. Hey Gary, do you still collect comics? Yes. How do you feel about the CGC slabs mixed? I remember a few months back you said you don't like different art cover variants. Why? Do you buy online or do you go to shops? Um, because when they were a novelty, they were fine. But now it's just it's like collecting cards because you get the comic, the cover, which has nothing to do with the comic and the art and the story on the inside of that comic are generally shit. And it's just a way to pad numbers. And uh, it, it doesn't mean I, I buy a comic to read it. If it has one, you know, like the Steve Ditko variant of Spider-Man 700 that's signed by Steve Stan Lee, which I have, um, I got it because it's a Steve Ditko variant. And I got all the variants because I collect all Spider-Man. But if it's just some rando shit, I stop doing that. I buy, by the way, I don't buy new comics outside of uh, Ripaverse or Mark Millar. Uh, I do buy Conan right now because it's very good. Uh, Conan's a damn good book. And I'm thinking about buying Transformers and G.I. Joe because I heard they're pretty good. But uh, as far as new comics, I'm out. I'm pretty much out. And I won't buy anything from Marvel and DC. Fuck them. But uh, I, I, buy, I buy older comics that I haven't read because there's tons. And, and they end up being cheaper. As I showed on previous episodes, uh, I, I, there's some later issue Savage Swords of Conan that I didn't have. I was getting them for three bucks a pop. And they're better than anything coming out today. Uh, Eudite, one for five dollars. We manga readers prefer physical media, but learn to tolerate digital before the physical stuff was readily available stateside. Okay, yeah, and, and honestly, piracy. See, this is where piracy helps. A lot of kids couldn't get manga translated manga, but they were getting it via piracy, and it made a lot of fucking fans who ended up buying your shit. So, uh, yeah, that's just, that's just a fact. Enochmamon on the Streamlabs side for $24 part one. I know we have tried to avoid politics here, but I can't keep quiet about this. Our borders are wide open and we have to, and we hit. Now we may have well-known ISIS terrorists in the country. The dirty bomber who's, who's been farting has been cited. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, to find who's been farting, they're using smell. If you know who's been farting, <laughs> please contact authorities. Meanwhile, his partner, ah, shit. What is it? I shit? I shit me drawers. <laughs> <laughs> I shit me drawers was cited near as. He got away, but left skid marks at the scene. It's only a matter of time before... you. <laughs> <laughs> you suck my you suck my dick appears. <laughs> he's, br he's bringing cousins. <laughs> oh shit! It goes on forever. Uh, you leak my dick and you like my dick. <laughs> Hopefully, ISIS member too. Uh, I've got <laughs> I've got We're a poopy children. I've got a poopy butt. Never shows up. DHS will have to call the code brown if that's what happens. Sorry to be serious. I know I try to have fun here and keep things light, but I couldn't help myself. Oh, God, there's one more. No one wants to worry about who's been farting. <laughs> Good night and God bless. Thank you enough for long for the last. <laughs> Good God. 
Uh, Bruce Leroy Jenkins for five dollars. Isn't this year's CinemaCon the one year anniversary of Drunk Three PO gave birth to Frank Gore? It is. Yep. It is. We need to celebrate. We need to celebrate. You know what we need is a a, a Caucasian's jersey, right? Not a shirt. We all got our Caucasian shirts. Mine's on the way. I think it already arrived. Uh, we got got our Caucasian shirts. But I think he, we need a, a Redskins jersey that's a Caucasian's jersey that says Gore on the back. Ah. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, drunk CPO <laughs> gave birth to Frank Gore. Uh, his contribution should be recognized again. 24-hour loop stream. Absolutely. Of of drunk. Three with, with Frank. Yeah. Just Frank. I'm here. I'm just off camera. I'll, I'll Only Frank. Oh. oh, are you okay? It's fine. Nothing. Drunk's here. Hi, Jay. He What's was up, Jay? here earlier in the stream. Oh, my God. Isn't this? Uh, so, Wrath's Rain for $10. Hail, Gary. Uh, I love you and the rest of FNT. You guys just saved my life dealing with bipolar, depressing, and suicidal thoughts. Holy crap. Uh, th that's not easy. Uh, I'm glad that we helped in any way possible. Your podcast has saved me through the darkest point in life. Thank you. Thank you for being here. The world is better that you're here, just so you know. Just so you know, if you haven't heard that yet. Uh, Jay agrees. Uh, Vapor Trails for $4.99. Everybody needs to keep physical copies of important books, movies, music, games, etc. You know, I keep telling my wife that. She's like, why are you buying so many movies? I'm on physical media. I just got uh, steel books of all the Rocky movies up to four. Wow. Very That's cool. right. And thanks, Jay, for your contribution, by the way. I should just show it off later. Event Horizon has come out in 4K, by the way. And I got the steel book Event Horizon. Uh, Kino reviews for five dollars. Chris, I haven't heard back regarding spell check for bias. I keep, I'll keep you if I get access to the tool. There you go. Garth Knight for nine ninety nine. I do think Jimmy Kimmel is funny, but the gal who was sticking up for nonsense had no clue as the go about the Godfather's movies and Lord of the Rings. Piers should have asked her her favorite Star Wars movie. <laughs> it's all good. I don't think Jimmy Kimmel is funny at all, like at all. I don't think he's a talented comedian. I think he's a very good corporate cocksucker. Uh, John Thomas for five dollars. Gary, my brother built a literal. What? But it's okay. We if we disagree, Garth. Uh, Gary, my brother. Uh, Gary, Gary. Shit, I can't even say my own name. That's a stroke right there. My brother built a literal walk-in vault for his neighbor so he could store his comic book collection. That is fucking badass. We can't have the. Well, I mean, I could, but that would cost so much fucking money. So much money. So much money. We're, it's in a it's in a very safe storage facility that's climate controlled. Well, it's my collections in in three locations, three separate locations. Oh, we're going to try to Harlan we're, Ellison. We're going to try to get it to two. Well, my house and a storage facility and a storage two storage facilities. Wow. Uh, Dineska for five euros. Mr. Gore, did you yes. refuse to read my super chat asking polka dot man what it was? Uh, what is a woman that yes, wears nail I polish? Thought, I thought it, yes, I did. I thought it was uh, a, a question that would have derailed the stream. I'm trying to have a polite conversation with David Desmulchin, who's in a movie called Late Night with the Devil. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, I, you know what? I'll make it up to you, I'll just read something else. But that had nothing to do with what we're talking about. This indie horror movie that he's in. Oh, the the Late Night with the Devil. Good. Yeah. And it was, yeah, the Late Night with the Devil, which is a very good film. And I thought it would have derailed the conversation. And it's a, a rude question to ask. And I have the discretion of whether or not, just because you said in a super chat doesn't mean I absolutely have to read it. And I've only ever done it once. And it was that question. So you have the distinction. It was, first of all, it's stupid. We've reviewed the movie, the Matt Walsh movie, which I happen to think is very good. But it had nothing to do with my conversation with David Desmulchin, who is a guy. And, 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 you know, he's a guest on my show. I want him to feel comfortable. So I don't know how you feel about that, Gary, if you won't read certain things. But that was the one and only time. And, yeah, I did it. So there you go. It had nothing to do, nothing to do with what we were talking about. Nothing. It's it was just, it was kind of rude. So, you know, 
and that's not where I want the conversation to go. We're talking about a horror well, movie. That's yeah, when you're when you're inviting a guest, here's here's how I would approach it. If you're inviting a guest yeah, on to good. talk about a movie, and that's what he's prepared for, that's what you do. That's what you prepare him for. Now, if if this is why I'm not going to bring a lot of guests. I, I'm not going to do stuff like that because if I bring a guest on, they're going to get asked that question, and I'm going to have to prepare him for it. So just to be, not be a dick, I well, don't want to. I mean, yeah. But it's like, a, you know what? It's a political thing. We're talking about independent film. We're yeah. talking about a movie coming from. It's not like, part of the subject. Like, it's not part of the subject. And a lot of times they'll be like, um, our moderator, um, Ms. Pete Coffee, will like highlight things. And it's like, well, that's not, that's off topic. Like, so I, but I love it. I love that she helps a lot. But, but I'll say like, actors are going to have to prepare themselves for like a different beast, which this is. It's, it's just a different beast. And, and uh, you know I, I don't know, like, what is that c question for anyway? What's it referring to? It nothing to do with the topic. And yes, I didn't read it, but I'm happy to read any other thing. You don't even have to send in money. Put in another thing and I'll, I'll read it. But like, you got to be like, the reason I'm able to get guests on the show is because during that segment, we're, we're being polite because there are guests and we'll talk about, I'm trying to educate my audience and we're starting to do this more on our member stream. We just did a member stream with Jim Agnew talking about how to write a screenplay, how to get an agent, how to, and it was just for members only so we could have an intimate discussion. I want to help people make this new culture. And by that, I want people to come on the show. They may not agree with me politically. I don't care. I don't care. I want to help and instruct people who watch us about indie film because you can do it. You can do it. These people, Jim was like, we read Sundance 20 years ago and he's like, I've talked to a bunch of these filmmakers. They're no smarter than I am. I'm going to go write a screenplay. Guy's done a ton of movies and done stuff. I'm trying to build something and give tools to other people. And yeah, if you're rude, I'm not going to ask it. But that's the only time that has ever happened. Only time. And I'll ask uncomfortable stuff. I try to do it before or whatever. But like, he's just promoting a horror film. So yeah, I, I, I don't know what to say. Um, well, I, 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 the only thing I, no, the, the, the only the only thing it. I the only thing I asked was like, what's it in reference to? I don't even know what he's referring to. He's, he's, exactly. He's now, trying is, to, is it he's something? Okay, hang on. Is it something the actor said in the past? Is that it? it, it that's that's such. I don't know if he said it in the past. I mean, I know. Look, David so, is so that, very liberal. He works in the industry, but that's not what. Okay, he was on that's the show a, yeah, to talk yeah, about a horror. Gotcha. Film. Yeah, that's uh, Janeska with another super chat with uh, two euros said Chris is right. I was trying to troll. Yeah, don't troll my guests because it's not well. That type of you can f with me all you want. I don't care. Like uh, f with me, it's fine. I'll be very honest with you, and I'll say exactly to you what I would say to your face if you were in front of me. That's my rule. On on if I if I'm on if I'm on Twitter and someone's uh, messing around with me, I'll tell them exactly. I try to be very. If you look at my stream, I'm pretty I'm pretty calm about conversations, even when people disagree with me. Try to be respectful or assume, but yeah, trolling, um, you're wasting my time and everyone else's. So there's my rant for the day. I'm just, I'm just not tolerant of like stupid shit. Uh, I, 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 some stupid shit went down recently. I'm just not, I'm not down with it. Not down with it at all. Yeah. And I'm you don't have to be I'm gonna like, it. I'm going to ignore it and do my own thing, do my own thing. And you know, that's it. Yeah. That's all you can do. You know, uh, it, it, like we, we all don't have to do the same things, right? That's why I don't, like, I don't do, uh, well, fuck, I'm a shitty interviewer, for one. So I, I've been offered a couple of actors to come on, and, uh, you know, like, the honest answer might not sound great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> people, honestly, people, well, I, let, let me, hang on, let me finish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is, is uh, people aren't that interested. Like, if you want to be, if you're a specific channel that is like, we are about film and independent film, works. It works for Chris. Does it yeah. work over here? Like, uh, it, it just, yeah. it, it it would be, you know, I'm I'm not going to sit there and interview somebody for a half an hour over a movie that we may or may not watch. And the, the movies we get offered, like, are, are small independent films. I maybe consider doing it on Nerdrotic Live if we can have a free-form conversation. I think that I'm way more interested in that. Uh, but not here, not here. Well, I'll just say this. In my opinion, actors are the least interesting part of the yes. process. Yes, To me, to me, I've never enjoyed interviewing actors. 
I did it at G4 because that's what they paid me to do. So I went to junkets. I'd always try to give like an honest or at least something that's a more interesting question. And I've gotten in some good discussions with actors. There are actors out there that know their stuff. David is a legit nerd. He's got racks and comics and just, he has his whole comic room. Like, like you, Gary, just different stuff. He is legit nerd. He's written comics. He's done a lot of indie films. We mostly 95 plus percent of our interviews are with directors and mm -hmm. writers. And then occasionally we get an actor who's interesting like David. But um, I, it's it's my job as the host of the show, inviting people on to be respectful. And that was that question was disrespectful. It was a troll. And it's not unlike what the mainstream media does to actors anyways, because they set traps for them so that they end up saying stupid shit or spout opinions or box, them, box themselves in the corners. It's no better or worse than that. So to me, it's just as bad to like what the mainstream media does as that question. Not that, that guy, like, I don't even like talking about shit like that because it's, it, but I did because uh, Matt Walsh made that movie and we were one of the very small number of outlets that actually reviewed the film both on the website, Dante did the written review. We did a, a group review, me, Alan, and Dante, and talked about that film um, and broke it down. We all watch it like, like it's not in our wheels, but if someone makes a movie about it, we'll discuss it. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I'm just, yeah, I just, uh, yeah. I mean, if, if you, again, Whatever. like, we, we don't want to be like the access media. So if I, if, if like, you know, never want to say never, but if we're going to bring somebody, even like a Gina Carano on or something like that, we'll have a i don't do a lot of prep but we have a brief conversation like hey is everything on the table you know because right, right. uh, uh, everything's kind of on the table here and and 99 percent of the time people say yes people ask me that too when i when i go guest on the live streams they they ask me hey is there some stuff that you don't want me to bring up like you know like they're, they're being sensitive about the addiction in prison i'm like no bring it all up bring it all up yeah it's, it's fine yeah that's it's totally fair. fine open like, book but I mean, I, it's yeah. being anyway. fair to people because that's yeah. authentic, right? That, that's you don't want to ambush somebody because you want to have a real conversation, and they, the debate could still get lively, like like crazy. But that's okay because we talked about it beforehand. So briefly, it's not like we get into every detail, and it's not like I submit questions because I, I don't write them down. <laughs> I just think them up on the fly. No, I just so. <laughs> say off the top of my head. Yeah. I never prep because I usually yeah. just know. I know it so well. Like what I, I used to prep, like, what's the point? It's whatever. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. I got, uh, it's all good. I just, there's a lot of things. I'm just not willing to, there's a lot of things I'm not willing to tolerate any longer. I'm just not too old I'm for not, this shit. I don't give a shit. I got other shit to do. <laughs> I got other shit to do. I'm like done. I'm not doing that. I drink. Therefore I am has gifted 10 neurotic memberships. Yeah. Yeah. I have an announcement. My, uh, the film, film threat Hollywood on the Rock stream starts in 12 minutes. It's going to be late. But I wanted well, to get a couple <laughs> things like our RSVP list yeah. for the Vegas meetup. I put the link in the description if you want to share it. It's there it is. But put the link in the description. It's in the description on the stream. And I will right. put it in the chat as well. So that's at the Millennium Fandom at the Millennium Fandom Bar Tuesday before our meetups. There's a, 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 a film threat. We're, we're giving away Blu-rays. We're giving away a bunch of film thread stuff. And I specifically named it official film thread CinemaCon VIP Vegas meetup for A-listers <laughs> only. As I'm being, I'm being uh, ironic. I'm being yeah. sort of a little sarcastic. I'm, I'm trolling. I'm trolling. Ah! <laughs> so, Anyways, uh, whatever. No, that's awesome. So the link is there. It is up. Yeah. Uh, and I'm so excited. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be. I fun. gotta eat, Gary. I gotta eat. Go, something. go, I'm brother. You gotta go. No, I don't give a shit. Oh no. no. Oh, just eat. I gotta talk to you. Just eat. Just eat. Film threat's well, gonna you... be late. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, go ahead and eat. I don't care. No, um, I gotta talk to you. Also, I know you gotta talk to me. We can talk after your stream, but like we can also talk right no. right after this. We'll talk. Okay. Now. <laughs> um. So and real quick, our meetup, all of our meetups. Every single one of Nerdrotics, Geeks and Gamers, whatever meetups we do together by ourselves are free. And they are for our fellow members of the audience. That's what they're for. That is the priority. Mm -hmm. The priority is the it is a thank you to, and it's the least we can do for people who have supported us for years, for months, uh, paying their harder money, spending their time with us, having a good time, 
and uh, making these channels what they are. They are nothing without you guys. That is our priority. These are not creator hobnob rubbing elbow sessions. That's not what they are. I think it's a great idea to do that. I think some creators should go do it. You can even do it during while we're in Vegas, but that's not what these things are. And that's not what they ever will be. They are for our fellow members of the audience so we could just nerd out on shit. And we could throw you a party, buy you a round of drinks, buy you some tacos. It's the fucking least we can do. But it's not about other creators. Just not. Uh, no, for $10, DEI is terrible. However, I would like to ask you all if there are uh, any movies you all uh, thought that doesn't have a main cast as white. Mine would be hard, The Harder They Fall, Let's Go Brandon Herrera. Hell yeah. Uh, as somebody who doesn't like biopics, I fucking love Straight Outta Compton. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> that was a good movie. I fucking love that movie. I love that movie. Uh, War Van Eagle for TV for four ninety nine. The only white lines uh, the Scorpions are doing these days are Goody's Pain Reliever, <laughs> while always link winds of change with the falling of the wall. Hell yeah, yeah. Well, that was the kind of the soundtrack of the 80s. They were never like my all-time favorite band, but they were always fucking on. I always knew somebody who fucking loved them, and they were kind of the soundtrack of our of, of our lives back in the 80s when we were doing lots of fucking drugs. Plus, uh, Melissa seems to remember, and I seem to remember a time we were tripping balls on acid and listening to nothing but the Scorpions. It was a good night. Uh, Dineska for two British pounds. Sorry, Chris. Uh, I'll be a good boy in the future. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. It's uh, look, I, it's just you have to understand my position. I'm I want to ha give you the ability to talk to people in the industry because anyone can be in this industry, but you decide the terms of how you want to be in this industry. That's why I think indie is the better choice. You can try to go corporate all you want. Good luck. But indie, there's no one stopping you but you. David also does indie films as well as appear in films like Dune and. The Dark Knight, and I mean, well, how is the Night with the Devil? Because that looks late night with the Devil. It looks kind of good. Really cool. It's about uh, this late night show host, sort of based on like a Dick Cavett kind of guy from the seventies. And there's this little intro kind of uh, documentary about him and his wife and tragedy that befell him. And it's then you see a complete. It's almost like uh, like a, a thing where it's just you just see you see this one episode of the show that happened on Halloween where he brought in like an exorcist and all these sort of weird, be great to have him on for Halloween. And then stuff happens during the show that is shocking. And they just like, it's never before been seen. There's like this whole, like, you know, we dug up the footage and then they show like things that happen off camera. It's really good. And he plays like kind of a Dick Cavett type it's, and it's all set in the era. It's, it's really good horror film. It's coming to theaters in a couple of weeks. So I plan to see it again. Yeah. I kind of, so, I like the trailer. I like the trailer for that. Uh, Jake, and David's a good guy. David's a good guy. So, uh, David. former homeless guy, right? Yeah, he, homeless, he homeless and drug addict. Drug addict. Yeah. Cleaned up, was in the dark night, and then did little indie movies. Just uh, as a good guy. Jake, the steak for ten dollars. My fiance finally watched Lord of the Rings with me. So is the wedding still on? That's my first question. Uh, she had never seen it before. I've never seen her so captivated. She loved it so much, and I felt like I was enjoying it for the first time again. So the wedding is going on. Congratulations. <laughs> Don't forget about Super Grifter Brianna Wu. Yeah, uh, Game Genie yeah. for $2. Uh, who can forget uh, Super Grifter Brianna Wu and Anita Sarkeesian. All roads lead back to the lonely woman who had to marry herself for her birthday. Yes, I put that on Twitter. But uh, it, we're finding out that a lot of defendants out there of Kotaku or who are currently working for Kotaku have worked with her in the past. Uh, Yellow Flash has a couple of tweets about it. RX Firm for $1.99. Gary. Uh, get my email about Vegas meetup. Uh, Mrs. Nerdrotic did. Who was the, she's the, she and X-Ray Girl are coordinating the meetup. Meetup sold out, like completely, completely. So, and when we say sold out, that means all the RSVPs are filled up. The, the film threat meetup is not sold out yet, 
And it's also I want to point out it's free for the film threat meetup. Also, we only charge to for people who troll. That's that's. Like, ah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, people will pay it's money. People, people will like. Here's my ten bucks, <laughs> motherfucker. Here I come. <laughs> I'm just Legion of memers. Uh, uh, memers. Stephen Jordan for four ninety nine. I can remember as a teen going to the music shop in the mall on the weekend for hours. Now malls are dead. Music has an uh was an outlet then. Uh, now music sucks. Yes. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was hard to find good new music. Sven Dragon for five dollars. Boeing employee, whistleblower Bennett found dead just prior to a meeting about Boeing knowingly fitting bad <gasps> parts on planes. This is true, and wow. there would be a time where people would believe that. By the way, he uh, uh self deleted. There would be a time where people would believe, ah, oh, it's just a coincidence. The guy must have been on hard times. We are now in a time where, no, no, fuck no. Looking a little sus. It's be because it's sus. If it looks sus, yeah. it's fucking suspect. I love how X-Ray looks confused when Gary and Chris talk 70s, 80s, and 90s cinema. By the way, <laughs> RIP Eric Carmen, beautiful voice and lyrics. Says Garth Very Knight true. For four ninety nine, all the time. R.I.P. Garth Knight for four ninety nine. I wonder where Chris Gore's vote was when he and R.M.B. were sticking up for the last Jedi. Are these two uh, latchers on to the movement? No. No. By the way, I at the time hated Force Awakens. I thought the Last Jedi was at least interesting because I thought it was a setup to a rise of Luke Skywalker, and it didn't happen. And the sequel trilogy is worthless. The ninth film is the worst film in the series. But for the problem started with Force Awakens. And Last Jedi, I, I actually think, is unfortunately the best of all those films, which are shit. They're all shit. That's that's, a, that's my you know tweet version of what I would say. There you go. Another person trying to I think a lot of people here. went on a journey. A lot of people liked uh, Force Awakens. Uh and hell, it. you know, like uh it. Mad Max Fury Road. I liked it when it came out. I did. Yeah. That was cool action and stuff like that. Little did I know that that kind of through line would fucking destroy Hollywood and straight up his girl boss feminism shit. Right. And I remember people getting called out a lot for saying it's feminist propaganda. And at the time, I didn't think it was. So I Same. watched till I watched the video breaking yeah. all the symbolism down. I'm like, oh, shit. It was. I think the thing that sucked <laughs> me in was the fact that all the women were super hot. And I was just like, well, yeah, oh, I mean, that, hot women like getting naked and clean that'll blind you. Off. And that blinds people a lot. And there's nothing wrong with being blinded by hot women. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with well, that. You know, the, the films of Russ Meyer always blinded me. But I think I, I, I could be wrong. Furiosa but, is probably going to be some pretty massive feminist propaganda. I think, I think if we had to like lean towards a direction, right. that would be the direction I lean. Right. Could be wrong. We'll find out. Yeah. Blue eyes. I mean, like, what would you rather have? Old man Mel Gibson running, or, or Tom Hardy, just a movie with Tom Hardy in the whole thing as Mad Max, or Anya Taylor Joy as a in a Furiosa prequel. I don't know. She's pretty hot. I I kind of like her. Would so. you rather have that than like Mel Gibson, old man, fucking Mad Max running around? No. Can I have both? I no. Don't know. <laughs> no. No. Just put Anya Taylor Joy in that movie. <laughs> they, it's weird how they're like using it like it's a Mad Max saga movie. She's hot, like, but she doesn't look hot in the movie. You know, I think she looks pretty hot. She's a dirty girl, like girls who catch catfish and work on homes. I was comparing her to like a tomboy. <laughs> now, don't get, don't get. It's not. I'm not <laughs> Those are not even close. I, the 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 girl like catching catfish. She, she's hot. Yeah, she's. Hot. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I like her. N not that. Not that lady who looks like she got hit in the face with a fucking pan. Uh, and her lips. Well, she, you know what? She didn't like her because she looks like the catfish that <laughs> what's her name was oh, catching. No. <gasps> That's probably oh why she My had a problem with it. In one minute, Gary. My show starts uh, in one Blue Eyed Scorpio, 4 99 Uh, hey, favorite Gary. Hey, Blue Eyed Scorpio. Uh, Game Genie for $2. Uh, oh, shit. Hang on. Wait, I wonder if I can. Uh, be... Jillian Michaels, thing? own mayor, too. Dude, we can talk. Oh, no, after... I saw that Jillian Michaels thing. He schooled him oh, about. Yeah. 
all the stuff happening in California. Her, she admitted her house was broken into. Bill Maher is so out of touch. Someone around him needs to. Bill Maher let him know. doesn't go to fucking Target. Bill yeah. Maher doesn't go to Walmart. He doesn't go to the grocery store to buy his own fucking groceries. He doesn't walk around the streets. He doesn't drive himself anywhere. He doesn't know shit. And any, it's only elites who listen to this guy. And the only time he gets any fucking traction is when he kind of says something that kind of makes sense. And it goes around on fucking Twitter. Right. But he is way out of, I think, I think, I don't know, man. I, I used to be a fan, 20th century just, model. It's an old fucking model. Some talk show on fucking HBO, which yeah, no one same cares. place that broadcast John Oliver. Fucking get your ass back to the UK. Dumb yeah. motherfucker. Jason J for $2. Don Lemon uh, just fired from X podcast by Elon. Really? What? He didn't Apparently, even... yeah. There's a. Is it trending? About it. All right. The, I, that didn't last show... long. <laughs> Technically, my show starts now. Okay. But, um, well, we got a few soups to get. go to your yeah. show, and we'll talk after your show. Oh, dude! But I want to talk to you. I'm excited to talk. I know, I know, I know. What we're talking about, but you got a show to do. I got a show to finish, right. and I'll be here. I, I, I'm not working on a video. Well, maybe. Yeah, you are. I'm kind of. I'm prepping for uh, my next video is going to be uh, the American Society of Magical Negroes. So oh. review. So that's that's. That's I know it's been it's only been a, a couple of people you know talked it. it's like it's only been a week and I usually do one a week. Uh, so that'll be next the next vid. That'll be the nice. next vid, and then uh, but there's uh, I think there's dailies coming out on new, on uh, Nerdrotic Daily, so you can look out for stuff there. But I'll just I'll call you as soon as you're done with your live stream. Okay, you got to get to your show. But I like hanging out. Okay, I do too. Do you want to just stay here? <laughs> Can I be on both shows? I told my team, I, I said, thank you, just Ken. Wait for me. So, all right, they, well, look, you've got like a bunch of soup. Okay. We got a you, bunch left. You got a bunch left. Yeah. All right, then I'm going to go because I got to prep for my show. But I'll say, come by. Alan is going to tell us about he saw Monkey Man and Fall Guy and a bunch of movies that were playing at Austin and South by Southwest. Can we rate it? X ray girl. We'll rate it. I already we'll put it. it in. We'll, yeah. we'll, raid. we'll raid you. We'll raid yeah, you. Yeah, raid me. Raid me when you're done. But then um, I'm going to talk a raid little bit me. more. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> about three body <laughs> problem, which I'm very excited to talk about. Um, uh, you know, I'll give my sort of early reaction. And uh, I think we got an interview with a filmmaker. So feel free to troll because I ask him what here. a woman is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Whatever. I like, the, Chris, I like I the documentary. You. I like the documentary, man. I love the it's a doc. great documentary. Um, it's a really good doc. But uh, I so I gotta run, but uh we'll talk like later. We will talk later. Love you. Okay. Chris Moore. Great right. Love you guys. Meet up. Yeah. Vegas Tuesday. Three yeah. days of meetups. Three days Goodbye. of meetups. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. Adios. Sayonara. Bye. Sayonara. Chris Gore. White people. Wait. I'm a white friend. Sayonara. <laughs> uh, drawing Tall for $5 says, My friends and I used to chant, John Cena sucks, but now it's John Cena cucks. The man <laughs> is pushing 50 and doing frat prank jokes for Hollywood likes. Yeah, he is the token toxic male to, to clown. In, in Hollywood. They would never do that with a woman. By the way, I don't care that he did it. But uh, let's see that with uh, Sydney Sweeney next year. Watch your ratings pop. Yeah. Watch watch your ratings, chub. They won't do oh, it. Yeah. Zian Hu for 742. New channel idea. Chris and Dante in Nerds in a Car. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that is actually a good idea. Uh, Fing Book for $3. Congrats on Piers Morgan. You want to... Uh, you want that Millie bad. Millie? Uh, million oh, subs. million. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'd want it. But uh, if I wanted it bad, you would already had two videos in the last week. <laughs> 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 to be honest with you. But there was nothing I like felt like that was video worthy. There's a lot of like subjects, but um, for, you know, for, for me to, to pull the editors and do all the crazy stuff I, when I had one planned. Which is, it's nice, to, like, it's rare to have one planned. Usually, I have no fucking idea what I'm going to do a couple days before I do it. But uh, 
when the reviews are out there, you know, because I've got uh, the American Society of Magical Negroes. We're going to do X-Men 97 review for the first two episodes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I'll probably do Ghostbusters. You got that. But then there's the topical stuff. Uh, I would say the only thing that came close is Bo DeMeo getting fired. But I can just talk about that. The X-Men 97 one when it come, comes out in two weeks. Uh, vapor trails for $1.99. Uh, people must sue for discrimination. They they have to. Lawsuits do have to start happening. And then, then it would put a stop to this. But now, like, not saying they weren't compromised before. It's just more obvious that judges are compromised. What's your thoughts on Nev Campbell returning to Scream 7? Zero. <laughs> Nick H. Aches for five British pounds. Isn't it because uh, two of the actors had to leave because of their stance? Or no, one actor was fired over her stance on the conflict across the pond that's not Ukraine. And then um, another actor left in solidarity. So they had to bring her back and pay her what they wouldn't pay her. I... I I don't think Nev Campbell moves the needle for anything. Uh, the last thing I saw her in was Twisted Metal, and she was fine in it. She was fine. Gabby Spin for $13 for $2. Guys, I love you. You bring me so much happiness. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Aww. Cheers. Thank you. You bring us happiness, too. Uh, Graham Paldekin for $5. Remember they tried to cancel Sydney Sweeney last August for her mom's MAGA-themed birthday party? That was her! Oh. Oh, now I remember that now. Wow. Uh there's no way she's based. If that's dude, if she's based, so many people are going to just, just fall instantly got in love. Hotter. She, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she just went up a few points. Sad uh the same Glenn Powell is Hal Jordan or J Storm. Said the oh said the same. Glenn, yeah, Glenn Powell would be a great Hal Jordan. He would. Uh think book for three uh three dollars. When Gary hits a million, everyone tip him. Like a like cow tipping. Like knock me over. <laughs> yeah. Uh think book for two dollars. Gary will hit a million by Friday. No, not by Friday. No. Uh what drives subscribers is videos, not live streams. And I've done a lot of live streams lately. So it would have to be a video or two uh, to get there. Bruce uh, Leroy James. So, I mean, like. I already uh, read this. You already read this. I, I read that one. Okay. Like, yeah. realistically, like, by Vegas, for sure. And I'm, you know, it just depends on how much I produce. And how much you guys like. <laughs> I think that's ult ultimately, that's what decides. <laughs> okay. Uh, AJX Skyline for four ninety nine. Sydney Sweeney for uh, Felicia Black Cat. Oh, Felicia Harding Black Cat. Spider Man Four Holland or the Amazing Spider Man Three with Garfield. I would say Sp Spider Man Four with Toby. Eric K for two dollars. Fuck cancer. I agree. Matthew Hammond yep. for four ninety nine. Prayers to Olivia Munn. Also prayers to Olivia Munn's boobs too. Hopefully they survive the cancer diagnosis. Well, we want her to survive, and she, we also she's had a few surgeries already. Yeah. So uh, Garth Knight for four ninety nine. Gary, please recognize the death of Eric Carmen. How many hairdressers are in mourning, including uh, your betrothed, Eric Carmen? Hang on, hang on. I don't know who that is. I'll know when I see it. Oh, the Raspberries front man who's saying, All by myself. Oh, I do know that. Yes, song. hairdressers okay, yeah, are morning. Yeah, yeah. That is uh that is a head of hair. Rest in peace. Eric Carmen. Rest in peace. Ask about Orange County, Florida. There's a reason service industry workers in Orlando call the company The Rat. Uh, says The Engaged Few for $5. The Engaged Few for $5. Not respecting the source material? Do you mean Elric of Mel Nibode? Yes. Well, nobody's had a point to not respect Elric. Oh, you mean with The Witcher? <laughs> with The Witcher, yes. I get it. I get it. Uh, yes, uh, the, um, a lot of things have bar borrowed from Elric. 
including The Witcher. Garth Knight for four ninety nine. Listen, I want to know who was responsible for Swayze's hair in Roadhouse. To this day, it's a Hollywood secret. That's a that's a good question. Jason XI for five dollars. I, I know there's an answer out there too. You probably just have to Google it. How uh, do you gatekeep people who started it? Well, you can't. That's the whole point. Is we can't gatekeep people. You you can't unless you own the business. You know. And 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 then if you own the business and and you're legit, the, how you gatekeep people is you hire people of talent. P O T S. But they can't just be people of talent. They also have to have a good work ethic. They also have to be uh, not a, you know, a backstabbing P O S. Ultimately, though, you don't find out sometimes until you've been working with them for a while. Mm-hmm. Rude Dude Reviews for $2. Thank you for uh, to the fellowship. You guys rock the web. You rock. You rock. Uh, Mr. E. Enigma for $5. I can't imagine being a parent and spending a fortune on their college education just for them to end up woke weirdo. What? I know, right? Well, uh, yeah. No, and, and just so you can fucking brag. A lot of it's bragging. My kid went to Harvard. My kid went to UCLA. My kid went to Stanford. Ooh, fuck it, ooh, whatever. Your kid's a woke idiot. Well done. Uh, my sign is cancer for four ninety nine. FNT new show pitch idea. X Men ninety eight. The FNT crew and guests will talk over X Men ninety seven clips when the style of I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> that would be good. Lance Snyder for five dollars. I am bracing for the Amazon fuck up to uh, fuck up Warhammer 40k, and then I am not ready for the back. And they are not ready for the backlash. We will long before uh, we will know long before when Ke Cavill walks. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The fans always know first. Mister Enigma for five dollars. Do you think Elon Musk will have any kind of impact on Gamergate two? Already has. Already has by signal boosting it. Super Mastermind for five dollars. Leo Major Gary. Look him up. He saved cities alone, defeated the armies alone. History can be exciting. He had one eye and a bad back. I will check it out. Leo Major Gary. I am creating my own stories and taking part in the counterculture in Hollywood and mainstream fiction as a whole. Thank you all for everything. Gemini for $4.99. Go get him. Go get him. Jediah Ben for $1.99. Yes, G.I. Joe is good, and they're building characters. Okay, I'll have to check it out. Check out uh, the Omnibus from 3D Joe's 2. Well, I have the comics. I have the comics. They were never, like, my my favorite, but, uh, I'll you know, they're fine. Japanese Demon Lord, Abir Lucifer for $5. The first trailer for the Crow remake comes out tomorrow. Hollywood suffering is deserved and enjoyable to watch. You, uh... We do have, we'll end it with the teaser. We have the teaser, but I got to get through a few more here. I cannot pronounce this name because it's written in a different language, but it's 17 <sighs> shekels. What's your favorite James Bond movie? For me, it's Skyfall. Mm. Um, my favorite James Bond bo movie does not have my favorite James Bond in it. Oh. But it's one I grew up with and I fucking love. I love Live and Let Die. That's my favorite one. People are probably cringing out there. That's my favorite one. Uh, I love Daniel Craig's uh, Casino Royale. I think that's in the top three. Thunderball, of course. It's fucking brilliant. Thunderball. Thunderball. Um, and uh, Goldeneye. That's the one that sticks out for me. That was my first one. Yeah. yeah. Spy Who Loved Me is really fucking good too. Yeah. I grew up in the Moore era. So I, I, my dad would take me, it was like every two years one came out and fond memories, love the fucking Moore era. Uh, Live and Let Die was, I love the theme song and uh, yeah, it's just everything about it I fucking loved as a kid, so.
But man, Daniel Craig's Casino Royale is a fucking great movie. It's everything that came after it, you know, it was pretty so so. Skyfall was good. I like Skyfall. I do. The last one, No Time to Die, fucking shit. Uh, Chris is a total wank. Uh, Chris is not a wank <laughs> for four ninety nine. But late night with the devil seems awesome. It does seem awesome. It does seem awesome. I do like the trailer. Late night. It's a very seventies trailer. I, I I like the voiceover in it. I can't eat hemorrhoid hurts for two ninety nine. Star Trek the motion picture was way better than Netflix the signal. I agree. I agree. Matthew Hammond for four ninety nine. The man with the bag sounds good. Arnold Schwarzenegger is Santa who loses his bag and turns to a naughty list thief, Alan Richson, to get it back. So that's a movie. Is that is it coming out? Like hopefully Christmas. <laughs> sounds like a Christmas movie. Read the three body books, Chris. I've heard uh, they're good, actually. Albert, not a retro for two Canadian pesos. I take Hardy or Gibson. I'm no simp. Yeah, I, I, I want a Mad Max movie with Mad Max in it. And I wouldn't mind a Tom Hardy one. That wouldn't bother me. But I prefer an old man. And you know what? You could put Hardy in it, too. So uh, Hardy is the kid from Road Warrior. And then you have old man Mad Max with Tom Hardy. That would be fucking awesome. Albert, not a retro for five Canadian pesos. Uh, Sydney Sweeney streaks and the pink hats will freak. You're right. Uh, Tiki A198 for $5. The Omen prequel looks like it'll be a human mom. Will it be a fake out or will it actually retcon a massive part of the greatest horror film? Well, I don't think I'm going to even fucking give it a chance. Uh, Grim Knack for $5. Can we just give another shout out to how much of a Chad gentleman Mahler is absolutely. Hang yeah. on. He truly is a treasure. Sydney Sweeney played hit and run as a kid. Take her 610 for $5. Gary, you missed the perfect opportunity to roast Chris when he said that his hair is done by a straight guy. He should have said, he should have quipped, and it shows. <laughs> <gasps> <laughs> that's good wow that's good uh discordian yeah for ten dollars rest in peace olivia mom muns she's not dead Her oh olivia's muns okay gotcha oh, shit. <laughs> f cancer f cancer uh rest in peace olivia's muns andrew matthews for two british pounds x-ray is a pot person of tartars I don't know what that means. And, uh, uh, a a P.O.O. Oh, a person of talent, person of tartars. Tartar. Never mind. What's Anakin uh, Sims for five dollars. The chat's about to tell you. Hey Gary, oh, no. what Tolkien books do I avoid to stay away from his dumb cuck grandson? Also, do you think we will get uh, Ash versus Evil Dead again? Hell, they were talking about an an, uh, an animated series, which I would love. And there was talks of a video game, right, chat? Wasn't there a video game? I can't remember. Um, I, I don't think so. And uh, 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 Simon Tolkien doesn't have anything to do with the Tolkien books that come out unless there's some new one. If you see Simon Tolkien on it, don't fucking bother. The apple fell very, very, very far away from the tree on that one. He writes his own books, but they're but they're nothing to do with uh, with uh, his grandfather. Uh, Nev Campbell is back for Scream Seven. Such a shame she uh, agreed to come back. Says Alejandro Angel for two hundred and forty nine Mexican dollars. Yeah, I mean, like she sold out. She took the money, especially over the controversy with the movie, right? Uh, Tits and entrails for nine ninety nine. Love you guys. Yeah. Reacher season one was mid. Uh, I disagree. Terminal List was far better. Terminal List is fucking awesome. Just curious what uh, you th make of Ripa's live action trailer. Yaira, uh, first Kentaro, now Torijama. R.I.P. I thought the trailer's fine. It's, it's, uh, it, as with all independent 
independent, self-funded, independent, non-corporate, never been part of a corporation, not some formy, former indie creator who's tried to come into the independent space, a, a true independent person. You're, you're starting from the ground up, right? Uh, so that's why you don't see me uh, roasting independent content for the most part because it's people starting out. And no, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, yeah, the trailer was... I would have done some stuff differently. Uh, but uh, I will also point out that Yara made a million dollars in 24 hours. Quicker than I saw. And at least he fucking tried a live action trailer. And you know what? A lot of people liked it. A lot of people were understanding that, oh, this isn't a Hollywood production and we're not going to compare it to fucking Disney or uh, fucking Warner Brothers. This is a guy who funded a trailer. You know, it, it's it's the same thing like judging a uh, drinker harshly on his first uh, 20 minute or the trailer for his first production, even though there are like he's put a bunch of money up and has Hollywood people involved. But does anybody expect like 24? No, no. And it wouldn't be fair to because it's the first time out. It's the first time out. You know, we're not all not everybody's going to be Nolan. You know, well, it wasn't his first movie, technically, but his first big movie. <clears throat> Knocked it out of the park. Memento. You know, not everybody's going to be like that. You got to work your way up. You got to work your way up. And Eric is building something, and he's starting out way ahead of 99% of the independent sphere. And as I said, I've looked through a lot of independent books through my time as a collector, uh, owning a store, uh, the new independent sphere, and most of it is shit. But it's okay. You, you build up from that. You build up from that. And just completing the project is a victory, is a victory. Uh, but if we're going to, uh, are we going to hold the same standards to independent creators than we are to people who have all the fucking resources in the world? That's, that's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. And I won't even entertain that. Um, Garth Knight for a dollar ninety nine. Gary, I love Roger Moore. Don't be ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. But like Connery's a better bond. I mean, that's, I think it's, that's an objective truth. Moore is the fucking man, though. Moore is the man. And Dineska for 10 British pounds. Gary, when uh, you, when will you leave us your fans? Uh, when you leave us, your fans will mourn you like people are mourning Akira. I don't want to fuck up his last name. Toriyama. Toriyama. Toriyama all around the world right now. I don't know about that. That guy made a lot of people happy. Like him. Uh, like him. In a sense, you became our brother. Am I lying, chat? Of course, dude, that guy's a legend. That guy created something that made generations of people happy. Thank you, but I'm not in the same, I'm not even in the same ballpark. <laughs> that guy's a legend. And I I know like the fact that I know what it is, if I never read it, you know, my kid loved it. My kid was sad when he found out. My kid was very sad. And Perry made a Beautiful tribute. Go check it out on Nerdrotic Daily, or you can watch the the intro to last week's Friday Night Tights. Uh, Ace Degenerate for fifty. Uh, check for the fucking pesos. Rest uh, rest in peace, Eric Carmen, the legend. His music will live on, all by himself. All by himself. Rest in peace, sir. And uh, that's the end of this show. Yeah. Thank you for all the generous. Uh, super chats so lots of lots of questions this week and uh we'll be back next week with the nooner uh go raid chris uh yes. they're gonna they're gonna talk about three body problem and then i'll be talking to him after about whatever project we're supposed to be talking about um i will be uh pondering i watched the gentleman and i fucking loved it so if you want to watch a good show and you're a fan of uh it makes me want to go back to the uk x-ray girl like immediately <laughs> I mean, I was talking to Mr. Porkchop, and he's like, we're going to be doing a possible little potato meetup. Um, I'm like, I want to go. I know, we'll right? Let's we'll see. Well, I, I think we're going to go back. I know we'll go back. It's we're just gonna a matter of when. It's a matter of when. Could be sooner than later. But uh, I had a really good time out there. But yeah, a great show. Give it, give it a watch. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up on the gentleman. Uh, what do you got coming up, X-Ray Girl? 
Uh, poor choices tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern with Tugs. We're going to be talking about the uh, girl Hannah Barron with controversy with Shamir, I believe her name is, um, and uh, talk about how that is a really bad take, in my opinion. Fucking so. terrible take. Mm -hmm. she, I thought, so. like, is she just trying to get attention? It's like, oh, no, no, she really believes that. I think she really believes that uh, makeup does not make a girl feminine. No. It should accent your femininity, but not be your, like, as people say, you know, your race, your gender is not your identity. Same thing with makeup. So there you go. Horrible take. Horrible take. All right. Uh, yeah. Friday Night Tights. We got Clifton Duncan. It's going to be fun. And he's he's got a, uh, uh, is it a GoFundMe? I think it's uh I think it's. Indiegogo. Over. Is it over? So he's doing a one-man show about Thomas Sowell, and he raised over yeah. $100,000. So congratulations insane. to him. Uh, Yaira is still available at the Ripiverse. It has hit $1.1 million in a couple uh -huh. of days. That's fucking brilliant. Insane. By Written by the Saska sisters, and uh, it's it's doing great. That's four yeah. books that hit a million for a guy who just started. At, like That's incredible. <laughs> And Film Threat RSVP for Vegas is in the description. So if you're planning on going, make sure you RSVP as, uh, you know, uh, fire codes and number of people and whatnot. So another opportunity to come hang out with people. That's good. Hang out That's with it. people. Encourage independent creators. Don't discourage them. Discourage fucking woke Hollywood all you want. Don't really care. They're big boys with all the fucking money and all the fucking resources. And uh, we will call them out. And uh, Disney could burn. That's where we'll leave it. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll see how this uh, <laughs> how this uh, proxy battle goes down. And we'll see you Friday night. Thank you to the Modrotics. Thanks to every single person who left a super chat and donation. You help keep the lights on. Thanks to all the lurkers out there. We know you're the majority. And thanks to everyone who participated in the chat. We appreciate your time. We appreciate you. And we'll see you next time. Bye. -bye. Bye.